Welcome to the Pat Mayo Experience, presented by DraftKings 2020 NFL Week 7 Picks Against the Spread. Survivor, one person, still remains in the Survivor Pick'em. Free money teasers, super locks of the week, and game previews for each of the Week 7 games on the slate. Jeff Feinberg is in studio with me. Jeff, did you know that people should smash the like button and give me their favorite spread or total in the description of this video and to time code their favorite moments to help us with the best of the year. That's their job. And to watch. And to share around. People need to know more about the the pick show. It's I everyone's so. favorite show. I, I, it's not like you know, you're helping out your league mates in fantasy football by telling people about this show. This is a show they can get in on so they can lose money on bets. I like that part of it is you don't want to like give your buddies that good fantasy football podcast you like. They have to find it on their own because you don't need like the same information in your league. That's been the biggest selling point of my show, though, is my information is so bad <laughs> that you want your league mates to listen to it. That's part of my marketing strategy. Sure. That's how it works. The Listener's League link for DraftKings is in the description of the video. If you are listening to the audio version of this podcast, enjoy the Tim Andrecuss theme song, which you can still listen to, not copyrighted on iTunes. Uh, and check out ftndaily.com. Use code MAYO. Get yourself a discount. There's free tools up there as well. Everything is in the description of this video. I'd like to introduce the third member of the team, The Coin. Do you know who does not appear with Jeff Feinberg on The Jeff Feinberg Show? The Coin. When is that airing, and how was the first week? I thought it went quite well. I enjoyed it. I feel like um, for how well I felt the first one went, uh, and will get better. So I was excited. Wednesdays, 10 p.m., Tuesdays, uh, sorry, Wednesdays, 10 p.m., Fridays at 2 p.m. I, I hope you have reminders in your phone set so you don't think it's on a Tuesday. Nope. I was just, I don't know why I was excited to say 2 p.m., and I said Tuesday instead. Um, which happens to be the day it is right now, not to spoil anything. But yes, Wednesdays, 10 p.m., Fridays, 2 p.m., live, interactive. Uh, I enjoyed it. Feedback uh, was quite positive, so that was reassuring and um, ready to go, ready to go. So you can watch that live for free up on ftndaily.com as well. I am not involved, so maybe you'll enjoy that more. I don't know. Paul's behind the camera <laughs> at Paul Shag on Twitter, and of course... The 78th member of the team, winner of a free money teaser. He's three and a half firms richer. It is Tim Undercust. Tim Undercust. That's uh, not my name, but I appreciate the credit. If you're following free money this year, you're up. You are up. That is true. You're two and four. But and I mean, people forget this, but this is not the most impressive, like consecutive, like two and six weeks. I once had in two in one week, so I've done better <laughs> than this before. But uh, now people probably don't even remember that. There was a period where I actually I hit two money line uh, parlays in one week, uh, teasers in one week, uh, which is so I, I've been even more impressive than this in the past. But two out of six weeks, that's a great clip to hit on. Uh, I promised the people this year that we would hit more often, and we have. And, uh, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm not going to let you down. You've I got some free money this week, too. I really like the board this week. Oh, so. boy. Uh, so that would improve your record uh, for lifetime on the show to 8-77. and 77. So you are, you're riding the heater, I must say, because you only had one win all of last year. I've doubled it. The fact that he can, like... Who he has the perfect mindset to be a better, though. He doesn't let <laughs> past results, like, influence him whatsoever. It's like they never happened. I'm like a starting Anyone pitcher. Anyone is capable only of, focus on the next pitch. The fact that, like, your big moment was winning two bets in a row <laughs> that pay, like, plus 300. And, like, not even a streak, right? Two in a row is just back-to-back. -back. Once we get that's to not, three, that's a streak. That, that's that's like, hardly a, my claim to fame, but it's something that I'm impressed. Listen, I navigated a perfect suicide season, and I'm en route to doing another one. I wanted to give you credit for winning your teaser, for being on a nice little run, for being plus money this year, for, um, you know, you can't sort of look at it as a uh, big picture. You got to just look at it yes. in a small picture Thank you. way. I appreciate as, your as kind as words. Pat's audience has grown. You have been winning these people money somehow. 
Thank you. Well, I, it depends on how <laughs> the timeline when you jump into this. Uh, Tim is also two and four on his super locks for the year. Same money. Uh, you and I, we're, we're scorching in the super lock department. I'm four and one. You're five and one. Uh, although for the third straight week, I went 500. You two both went eight and six. The coin went seven and seven. I still lead for the year at 47 and 43. Jeff is 46 and 44. Tim is 45 and 45. The coin lagging behind 39 and 51 for the season. It was horrible last it, year, too. It, but maybe it was it so good. Watching the, maybe it should start watching the games. It needs to know. start watching the games again. Um, through week six, I think, like, me and Tim worked our way out of our early season holes. So that's commendable. Yeah, I had one really good week, one really bad week, and basically 500 every other week. Well, you were scorching week one. Yeah. Then I wasn't in week two. I only made one actual spread in total bet last week, and it was that Pittsburgh line. Well, that went well. Yeah, it went, went really well. Props went five and one. I had a good week last week, and Russell Henley almost got me there. Almost. But he cashed me the top five and the top ten, which was nice, too. Let's jump into the games. Thursday night. Do 54 hole leaders win? Ever? They have in the Not past. Not when I yes. bet them. Not when I bet them when they're 54 I, hole I, leaders. I, had, that. I mean, we'll save the Zozo talk for the end. I'm actually doing the full golf show with Rick Gaiman on Wednesday if people want to check that out. But I had no expectation that Henley was going to win on Sunday. I just said he was sitting at 15, and there was like a, whole, a consortium of guys at 12. And I was like, I hope for everyone with the ticket, but... Yeah. Didn't expect it to be Kokrak who won, put it that way. Uh, yeah, certainly mm-hmm. not. But outside of, of Xander, there was really just a motley crew of people, JT right? It was, was like JT L- was Lanto, right JT. JT's Mont- good. Uh, JT, Justin Thomas is a very good golfer. Oh, but he wasn't really... He was at 10. Yeah, no, but uh, yeah, but that was still... F- Five back yeah. of Henley. I was talking about there was like a crew of 12 that like felt... Yeah, bad besides Xander. Yeah. Anyway, so. Thursday night game. Giants at Eagles. Miles Sanders is not playing in this game. The Eagles are favored by four points. At home, 43 is the over-under in this game. Might get Deshaun Jackson back. Not sure. Zach Ertz also not playing. The offensive line is completely decimated. Dallas Goddard probably not playing as well yet. Here they are. Four-point favorites. 220 on the money line. I don't know what the compelling case for the Giants is in this matchup. Like, they have a bad offensive line. Philly can get to the passer. Danny Thumbs is just going to put the ball on the ground any chance that he gets. And the expectation from last year, at least towards the end of the year with the Giants, is that they would have offense in spurts where they'd be able to go downfield with either Slayton or Ingram or maybe Golden Tate could work himself in. But it's like two Slayton plays a game that are like, all right, and that's their entire offense. Other than that, they turn around and hand the ball to Devontae Freeman for two yards a carry. Like, I don't know what the fuck they're doing. But if they win this game, they could be tied for the division lead. You got a lean? I like Philly. Uh, Washington is just so far in the gutter, despite Philly. Oh, how dare you? Sorry. Washington's all right. I meant the Giants, and I was just thinking about that game and how that two-point conversion was good for me in my super lock. Make or miss. I I, I I was looking at it. I was like, this is perfect when you have the plus money. Like, no overtime here. Yeah, I know. The Giants, to me, I'm not impressed at all. Like, they got a fumble return for a touchdown. They should have lost that game. They got a couple of big runs from Daniel Jones. They do nothing offensively. Bad team, short week against a really injured team with a coach that I still like. There's still enough here for me to take the Eagles. So the coin is going with the Giants, Tim. Can you make a compelling case for the Giants? Yeah. Look at how they played this season. They lost by a point. They beat the Skins by a point. Lost to Dallas by three. Lost to the Rams by eight. Lost to the Bears by four. Lost to the Steelers by ten. Uh, they're not a great team. They're a bad team, but they have been competitive in all but one game this season against some pretty decent teams. So four points seems like too many. I think this should be three and a half or three taking the giants. Wouldn't be shocked if the giants won the game, given how injured Phillies. I still think Philly's going to probably win the division. I think they're the best team when they're, when they get it all together, but the giants have not been the Jets, the Giants have not been the Jaguars. The Giants have not been like one of the really, really, really bad teams. They've only had one like complete route. So I think people just seem to not realize or appreciate that. When you go look at the Giants record, they're like, you know what? They're actually showing up in a lot of games. And so they 
we, we should take the points here, I think, in a short uh, short week. You could be right, but I feel like that's a lot of box score watching, talking about how competitive these games are, because the Giants aren't in any of these games, okay, really. But, <laughs> okay, but they're only losing by small amounts, and now they're playing a team that's won four and one, and you're telling me I should lay four points with this against them? I, I'm not going to lay four points with the Eagles right now. They're too injured. The Giants seem feisty enough that this game could be 23-20, and boom, I get my cover. Could be 23-20. I, the Eagles are just... You watch them for a quarter and they look really good. Then you watch them for the other three quarters and they look like a fucking disaster. It's I, I can't. I agree. Really figure it out. Are they, if, can the Giants get into the backfield over and over and just get pressure yeah. on Wentz? If that's the case, it's going to be a close game. But I think it will be. I'll take Philly. I don't like it though. This is going to be a pure pass for me from the betting side. Don't need to bet the game just because it's on Thursday night. Remember that Sunday slate. No, there's a debate. I won't be watching it. And a World Series game. No, there won't be. Oh. Uh, they'll be off on Thursday. You guys continue to have your conversation. That's fine. Go nuts. This is the first week we've done this show with all the spreads, and I don't want to ruin anything. I don't want to jinx anything. Just trying to get in to the slate. You guys are talking about fucking baseball debates. I don't give a shit about this stuff. No, so, go ahead. No, you guys are hosting the show. Go nuts. Talk about what you want. <laughs> Tim, you, you seem like you had a lot to say. Keep going. Oh, listen, I don't host my own show. Jeff does. He can take the ball and run this down the field, not me. No, you were the one who wanted to interject, though, so go ahead. Continue talking but about said, what, what you want to talk about. Go nuts. I said what I had to say. Oh, really? Yes. Okay. Detroit at Atlanta. Atlanta. Tim Superluck coming through for him last week. Minus three. At home this week, 56 and a half is the over-under. The Falcons' offense so far this season has actually been good every time Julio has been on the field. Every time that he has been injured, they have been a train wreck. Detroit, I don't know, man. Like, are they... Who can jump out to a 21-point lead in this game and then blow it? Do you Both bet, teams. Do you just bet the other side once the team jumps out to the gigantic league because you know they're going to bleed it back? Is this, is this the ultimate in-game play? <laughs> I feel like Detroit's a better team. Precisely, which is why they're the first end of a six team, uh, six and a half point tees. So Detroit up to nine and a half? Up to, well, I guess it would be nine and a half with what we have on the books. Yes. Okay. All the lines coming from DraftKings Sportsbook. Tim trying to invent his own lines to give you. I'm currently on points. DraftKings Sportsbook and have a different number. That's why I said that. No, we send you the odds and they're locked in. You can see them right on All the right, screen. All right. That's fine. I'm just, anyway, yes, we're going to take the lions here. Two very competitive teams. I thought that, and it made sense last week when the Falcons fired their coach, that they would probably get up for the game. And they did. And it happens that the Vikings are also just terrible. And Detroit is a good team with not a great record. Uh, they're two and three and two and three ATS. I kind of expect them to win this game. Again, I like it when teams that are dome teams go on the road indoors. I think that's an advantage that people underestimate. How is it an advantage is, against a team that also plays their games at home indoors? Because that's just a regular home game for them. You know, it's a, it usually a, a, when you're a dome team, you go on the road. It's a real it's a real effect to not play indoors on turf the way you're used to. Last week, Atlanta got to play indoors in Minnesota. People underestimate that that's an advantage for a visiting team that other visiting teams usually don't get. Same is true for Detroit. I like taking dome teams on the road indoors. And so Detroit fits that theorem. And moreover, I think, like you said, Detroit probably, not probably, is the better team. I expect it to be tight and competitive. I So I will take the points and I'll, I'll tease them up. Hopefully Detroit's got a healthy situation in the secondary. This, uh, But I, I side with Detroit here. Atlanta plays Tampa on Thursday, I want to say, the next week? No. Th Tampa just played the Thursday game. Tampa back-to-back-to-back -to -back -to -back primetime games. Yeah. Uh, someone. No, I believe it's it's either New Orleans or Carolina. Well, Atlanta's got a primetime game, and they're crap, and they got nothing to really Carolina. look forward to. So uh, give me Detroit. I, I kind of agree that they are the better team. I don't know. I, I bet Minnesota last week, so I was obviously wrong about that. I want to say the advance line on this game. People really saw Atlanta like look good for once and now like really like Atlanta again because this thing might have been one and a half before Atlanta looked good against Minnesota. And now it gets to a key number and in some places could cross it. 
It's interesting that people are so willing to jump back on Atlanta. Right oh, now. they just need a taste, right? Julio. But how can I? I've been a sucker for it too. I'm not I, making me fun too. of it. Me too. I'm one of those people who <laughs> loves taking the Falcons, but the, not this week. These teams, like I said, Detroit might be like the better overall team. But now that like Quinn is out and Sideshow Raheem is the head coach, <laughs> like they have the head coaching advantage. Yeah, I would. Yeah, I guess so. Maybe. Matt Patricia, bad coach. There were reports that he's going to be fired because he should be. No, on ESPN that Atlanta is going to be fielding Julio trade offers. They Makes should, sense. I mean, if they finally come to the realization point that they're not going anywhere with this current core, you need to start getting stuff for your pieces. Yeah. It's like, it's, I mean, it's funny that we had that Matt Ryan, Matt Stafford discussion like two weeks ago. I didn't realize that they were going to be playing this week, but at the same time, like, what do you do with Matt Ryan? Cause you're not now going to start contending with Matt Ryan all of a sudden now that he's even older and, you know, towards the very end of his prime, could you get anything for him? The answer is no. So what do you do? Although he is leading the lead in passing yards. If you remove Prescott, cause he's done for the season. Well, that, that's fantastic. It's really football. translating to a whole lot of wins on the field, Tim. No, but I'm just saying, if you look at the numbers, Ryan's numbers do look pretty good. Yeah, but he hasn't been good. That's the whole so thing. So Atlanta can't just walk away from him. If he like, Why? leads the well, that, that's like, passing now, yardage, who cares? no team has ever uh, uh, you know, cashiered their quarterback after he had the most passing yards in football. That has never, ever yeah, happened. But that, that is, you might be correct, but that is such a stupid way to look at things. Did okay, but that's just what's just going to happen. A guy who Whether won it's smart or dumb, it's, not, yards in the last no, it, it's, it's dumb. It's like, oh, our defense gives up 400 points a game. We have to pass 60 times. Yeah, fucking of well, course. Whether it's smart or dumb, of course it doesn't you're matter. you're going to lead the team in passing yards. And they can't get rid of him if they wanted to. That's the whole thing. No. They, they would have to cut him like he was Le'Veon Bell. Yes. And, uh, Except, you know, I would feel bad for Matt Ryan having to leave Atlanta. Felt really good for Le'Veon Bell. I was happy for him. I'm going to take Atlanta. Detroit isn't sort of the hard-nosed team that gives Atlanta a lot of problems. They're kind of soft. That is true. And that, that those are the teams that Atlanta likes to play. Plus, de- on the whole, Detroit is going to do dumber things than Atlanta. I feel like it. I, uh, I, I know that's going to shoot. <laughs> Throughout the course of the game... Atlanta will play better than Detroit. It's on the very last play of the game. In the last, like, two minutes, will Atlanta find some way to fuck this up? But throughout the course of the game, Detroit will find ways to fuck it up. These are two weirdly similar teams. Two very stupid teams. Yeah, two of the stupidest teams. So I'll take Atlanta at home, minus three. Cleveland at Cincinnati. Cleveland getting getting some respect on the road. We saw this game earlier this year. The over-under is 50. The Bengals are three-and-a-half-point underdogs at home after their almost win last week against Colts. What's up with the Colts <laughs> and almost losing to like bad teams? It's uh, hard to say. The Colts don't play this week, so let me just say this right now. As you get older, you become better friends with <laughs> like your friends. <laughs> Why are you making me laugh? Well, I think I know where this is going. <laughs> you don't have a clue. Okay, prove me wrong. You become better friends with, like, your friend's parents. Like, you're older, they're <laughs> older. Like, it's this weird thing. So, like, you get to know some of your friend's dads in ways. Things like that you kind of, memories from when you were, like, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. And then you mix them up with being an adult, like, make a lot more sense now. I got a friend's dad who is, uh, like, pretty much a proven sex addict. Sweet. Is it David Duchovny? No, but he's like, <laughs> he's he's ruined his first marriage, his second marriage. He, even the girls that like him now, he can't like be with, be around because like there's just never enough. This is so weird to say it about Philip Rivers. He's also because, a sex Is that yes, why he has so many kids? I think Philip Rivers is a sex addict as it pertains to needing to like take these shots downfield that are so freaking unnecessary. The Colts are up one point. They're driving. They are taking time. He's got to throw into double coverage and throw in interception. He's lucky the Bengals take that football, go back the other way, and their field goal hits the upright. Colts get the ball back, score a field goal. Burrow can't win the game. Whatever. Phillip has, he can't help himself. Is that like mean- thinking of my friend's dad, he can't help himself. I have to say, Jeff, you're right. I didn't think <laughs> you were going to compare your friend's father's sex addiction with Philip Rivers. Does this I, mean that, that is not a prediction? Does, does, does this mean that Drew Locke is the new Philip Rivers? Because he did the same thing in the Patriots. I have no idea, but you think now Philip is a cult. Like there's a strategy there of the line protects him. They keep the football. They rely on no like real weakness. 
Except when you break the team down, his turnovers can be a huge weakness. Um, that that is just should not be happening. I couldn't. I was watching a lot of that game. I was enjoying the comeback. Uh, it was good. It was fun. It was a lot of fun. Justin and mom went on a little weekend away on the buy, so I got shipped off to dad's and. And I got to see him with his new family, and it was good. Whatever. And his 14 girlfriends. Yeah. Or however many he has, <laughs> you know, that, that weekend. But as Philip Rivers, in terms of, like, taking ridiculous chances with the football, he's like a sex addict. He cannot help himself. He will ruin his relationships. What are those called? Jump offs? Isn't that the term that kids are using these days? I don't know. Well, what is he talking about? As for this game... I have to pick the Browns at a principle that if this team is doing the right things, they're o over their dead body. Are they allowed to lose two times to a rookie quarterback in like a month in their division? When NFC North has rules, there's just ground rules. Wait, they beat the Bengals the first time. Pardon? They beat the Bengals the first time. On a Thursday night. Yeah. Sorry, then they didn't cover, right? They got yeah, they did not cover. They got backdoored. Okay, maybe that's why I was annoyed. Whatever. Yeah, that worked still out nicely. The, I fell asleep and missed it. Still the Browns. The the Browns are becoming a team that... But, well, but Mayfield's injured. They're a completely different team, and they're not... Might not sure, be. Sure, it looks like he's going to play, though. I don't think that he was... Well, he played last week. I that hurt them. I don't think that... Well, that's the reason I locked in Pittsburgh. Baker was playing through an injury. Uh, the reason that he got taken out at the end of that game was to, A, not make him more hurt, and B, what was the point of leaving him in there after he just looked so terrible the entire game? Oh, but he's so I, tough, I, and he's so strong. He, he really put it out. Well, he's not just... I mean... Yeah, he's so He's so strong. He's such a that's a, such a big tough guy. You shouldn't guy. be going there. Yeah, you're talking about your quarterback who has like no. The, I'm not talking the, about the, my quarterback. The flu and refuses to play. Oh my shoulder hurts. You'd think at being seven years old that his uh, body would regenerate a little bit better. You would. Yeah, think, he's not Tim, Wolverine. You you're right. Think, he's not Wolverine. Tim, you would honestly think you say nothing and just hope the world forgets. <laughs> but but no, because I know the world is taking not shots forget. at Baker is not like. You're not allowed to not do that. Forget, so I might you're as well not, take you my aren't shot. allowed to do it because your guy Sox. won't be on your team next year. Uh, also, did you see the cuss prediction that got sent to us? Where Tim makes all sorts of excuses for Sam Darnold because he has no supporting cast, yet goes at Baker, yet when he talks about the Brown supporting cast, all he ever says is how terrible they are. I mean, I think they're very different circumstances. Why? I don't think it's well, for one thing, the Jets don't have anybody as good as Odell Beckham Jr. But you, you know, said, I think Beckham but, is a shell of what he used but to you be. Said, you, said, you said like two weeks ago he sucks. Well, he's not as good as he used to be. He's still better than Smith or, you know, whoever else we're rolling out there, Berrios, you know, storming through the Berrios out there. Like, we, 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 have, our, we have our problems. Uh, I, I, I don't. I, I read that and I was like, yeah, I think that's just sort of. Yeah, because you live your truth. You, you, you don't want to hear the truth. You want to live your truth, as we know. I think Cleveland's, I think Cleveland's, the, Cleveland is like Buffalo. Cleveland is like Baltimore. They're just going to beat up on bad teams. I agree. And I, and agree I think that Cincinnati that. is not like bad, bad, bottom of the barrel, but they're not good. So I think that's. I don't think that the Browns steamroll them, but they've been beating bad teams. So I'm going to pick them to beat another bad team by only three and a half points, even if it is on the road. So I like Cleveland. I agree. And the thing is, I mean, Burrow will be up for this because he now knows that there's a new person in town to steal his Rookie of the Year award from him. So this would be a big win for him to put on his resume, and he's going to need it. Well, he, he is going to need it. He's going to yeah, because Tua has a Tua has as many wins as Burrow and Herbert combined already. It's true. And a perfect passer. And a perfect passer. Rating. Perfect passer. Rating. And a perfect completion percentage. I'm excited. This is fun. He hasn't given away huge leads on primetime, for wait, example. Wait, wait till the sweat starts to come when he goes like 4-0 coming out because he gets like the Jets twice or something. Those... I mean, Dolphins fans are, are certainly breathing easier. This is what I've been told. No, th this is uh, exciting. This is exciting. So, we'll get there. Oh, no. So we don't really get – they don't have a game. So can we talk about it? Well, after you make your pick, how about we talk about it? <laughs> I'll take the, the, the Browns. Okay, so the Browns. So we're going back to the Browns. Yeah. What if Keenum yeah. ends up starting? I still like the Browns. Yeah, I think you get a better number, too. So, okay, let's talk Tua for a second. I love it. I feel I, bad for Fitz. I do feel bad for Fitz, and you could almost have a funny conversation. Like, who actually got it worse, Fitz or Tyrod? And you'd have to argue Ty Fitz, because the guy actually played lights out and lost his job. 
Uh, although Tyrod did get screwed. The, the uh, Well, the big thing between them is that Fitzpatrick can just parlay this into another $15 million contract next year with someone, or it'd be a backup for $10 million, whereas Tyrod's probably out of the league. Well, yes, but here's yeah, but the Tyrod other... Tyrod also had a doctor injure him. Uh, it, probably intentionally. Here's the other part about it. I would joke with a Dolphin fan who's upset that they're lucky their coach is an Anthony Lynn because imagine if... Tyrod was doing what Fitzpatrick was doing for the Chargers. Oh We'd sign him to a five-year contract and Herbert would just be a lifetime backup. <laughs> like we would ride the 40 year old. Um, as we've kind of been alluding to, and I watched that Dolphins score come in last, last week and thought, okay, wow, this team is three and three. They go to the bye. I would have come in today clamoring to say it's time to bring in Tua as bad as you feel for Fitz. The fact that Tua can now play in games that somewhat matter and where his mistakes matter, I think is invaluable. If you're a Dolphin fan, let's be realistic. You're like, not winning the Super Bowl. What are you doing? <laughs> It'd be like, you got a 20-foot putt. Like, I'm not hitting it, but realistically, I'll get down there and two for you. So, Dolphin fan, Fitzpatrick, veterans, what are you missing? Wild card weekend? I don't think Tua, Tua can get them there, too. Agreed. Like, I don't think that... Fitzpatrick, we can't overreact to what you're seeing no. against the Jets. The Niners no. in a horrible spot. Again, you feel bad for Fitzpatrick, but there's no, the man is 40 years old. There's nothing in his career that says league median QB play. Uh, like his war doesn't say anything that he can't be replaced. So I'm oh. super excited for the Dolphins. I think this is absolutely the right move. So they can start 2021 with contention expectations instead of what is Tua expectations? Paul, uh, question for our uh, our prism expert. I mm -hmm. see uh, the t Tua Tua cards going pretty cheap. Should we, should we should we be jumping on that? Yeah. Here's the thing. If you think he's going to be good, then you jump on it because I haven't bought Herberts in a couple weeks. I made my last Herbert purchases. Um, Probably before, or you know what? I made one more <laughs> before the Monday night. No, before the Monday night football game under the guise of once we go on Monday night football and he does what he does, <laughs> this is a value purchase. Subsequently, all a value purchase. All purchases have been finished for some time and the shipment is now finally heading to me. Um, but are you going to start buying Pokemon cards? No, I am buying no cards. What about these new PGA cards? I don't want Imagine to talk. If you I had wanna... a Matthew Wolf rookie card or a Morikawa rookie card. <laughs> now that you want a major, how valuable that would be. <laughs> I could get into that. I don't want to like throw cold water on in it, but I'm having fun talking about Tua. I think this is an amazing opportunity for the Dolphins, and they're taking full advantage of it. You're seeing Herbert look good. You're seeing Burrow look good. Why shouldn't Tua be just fine on a team that's competently coached with competent weapons? Um, See what you got. And if it's a total cluster fuck, if it is, I'm not, don't take that as me calling that. No, you're, you're waiting for it. Though. No. That's all you want. No. Like, you're, look how happy look you are. Look at that <laughs> just, wicked just grimace. Just thinking about it, that's it's all you fun. want. It's fun. Let's all hey. play. Let's all play. Let's all play. The Dolphins. If it sucks, they have, they have so much draft capital to go into another deep QB draft next year. I'm not predicting that. I'm just saying, let's wow. get it all fucking out there. No, 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 just no, no. Just it out there, though. Just putting it out no, there. No, I'm saying, like, let's say worst case scenario. Just asking questions. If worst case scenario happens, they own Houston's pick, they own their pick, there's three nice QBs, they could do it again. Because that's all that matters. And I think they're doing the absolute right thing. Of course they're doing the right thing. You have a rookie quarterback who is under a perfect salary structure that you can build a team around. They've already gone out and spent this money on DBs, and they still have money to spend plus this draft capital. You need to know whether he's your guy or not. Because yeah. he needs devil's advocate. He needs Wait. to be good for four years in order to maximize this window. If you have a legitimate shot of winning a Super Bowl, I assume that's the goal when you're an NFL team. You weren't doing that with Fitzpatrick. And if Fitzpatrick plays well and gets you to nine and seven or ten and six, you make the playoffs. That's a great success. That's a good year. But you're back at square one starting next year. Yeah. That does you no good. And then the timer is off a year already. Now you need to spend half a year or a full year trying to figure out what you have in this. So they just cross that year off. So now you're down to a two-year window. Which just, is what Kansas City did. 
Sure. But that's the that, they and all, it worked perfectly. The super is prospect we, we agree, ever. You can't expect that, that result. Reed, no, no, no. The, that, that's also that no. Reed that is, is a brilliant coach. That is also a completely different circumstance because Kansas City was a top four Super Bowl contender the year with yeah, Alex yeah, Smith. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Okay, but I'm just saying they didn't no, draft. I, they didn't draft but, Mahomes. Hold on, they didn't draft Mahomes fifth overall with the thought that they could have first overall. They drafted Mahomes trading in through the twenties as a playoff team to go get their future while still being a well-established team that was definitely top three in their conference. Yeah, like okay. they, they so had a chance to be, win the Super Bowl that year. Miami I guess, does might not. It not have, might it have not profited Mahomes to have spent an entire season learning the offense? It clearly did. I, I, no, 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 see, I, I don't think so. Well, I, you can't argue that it didn't, but it... But should, you have well, to, okay, but, but what other rookie quarterback has that stunted? If they're going to be good, they're going to be good. If they're going to be yes. bad, well, they're going to be no, bad. No, that's not necessarily true, right? You know, you can throw a guy in too early and perhaps ruin them. That has happened in the past. You, too, but so. you don't know whether that he was bad or that ruined no. him. You have no right. idea outside of anecdotal right. evidence that you think. What, like, really good right. coach ruined the good quarter? It just seems like when they're bad. I don't know what I'm trying to say here, but Mahomes seems like it would have just worked. He's that special. And to be your outlier. So for the example for coaches and organizations to use, and I got mad when the Chargers used it, as it pertained to Herbert, how well it worked for Mahomes. I think that yeah, is totally, Mahomes is the best player on the planet. I think that is totally unfair. Now, history shows, and me and Tim, um, I like to think of myself as older and sometimes don't like to think of myself, uh, these quarterbacks, uh, maturing at a scale that, that when I was younger, we accepted. And lots of guys who sat had success. Lots of them. Carson Palmer. Palmer, Rogers, Rivers, they all sat, they all had fantastic careers. Yes. As those so were the, work that those way, were too. the highest draft picks who got a chance to sit. And they all sat and they all had fantastic careers. So you have three guys over the past what, 20 years? No, I'm and they're they're long they're almost from a bygone era cuz the second Russell Wilson came out as a third round pick and did what he did, the clock changed on everybody. Because that's the, the way changed. the way the salary cap is set up right now. That's how you have to do it. Well, obviously you don't have to because Kansas City didn't, and they won the Super Bowl. So you don't have to do it. That Kansas City did it on Kansas City just did it on a Mahomes rookie deal. They did. They maximize right. a very short window, and now they have to go pay him. So we'll see how they do now. But at the same time, they were still fucking Super Bowl contenders without him. Sure, but the Dolphins yeah. are divisional. Ch- are, 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 I'm not saying I agree or disagree. Then we'll, saying, why don't you pick a side and I'm fucking argue that one? As a, I'm saying that it's not a slam dunk, and it's silly to say it's a slam dunk because I think you can argue it round and argue it square. No. What you all, what you said, has a lot of merit to it. On the other hand, Fitzpatrick is playing well. The, this is talk coming main, from someone who roots for a shitty football team. This is talk. oh, wouldn't it be yeah, great no if we crap, could win? They're six. zero and six. Well, wouldn't Excuse it be me? great if we could Excuse win me? four He's games? Forty this year? years old. If you don't get the program or buying into what the program is in Miami, you're a moron. And now, the, they're no, also no, very sorry. lucky. They're lucky, they're lucky that, that there's no is, locker is room graceful. to lose. Yes, how graceful Fitz is, Fitz is, Fitz is being is about class. This. Fitz is class. But they're lucky there's no locker room to lose a veterans because that to me that entire team is made up of 2018 through 2021 yes, draft capital. I agree. A veteran so, team you could never do this with. You would lose the locker room. But a veteran team isn't set up to to everyone there knows what's happening. So I agree. I just say I'm reticent to And I'll, let me tell Dolphin to, to fans who are if, upset if about it. Plan, if you have a plan for his development that you've set up since the start of the season. You should pursue it. You and, shouldn't just say, well, now that our buy is changed, maybe we could throw him in here. Like I, To me, that seems kind of non-analytical, sort of dumb. Like, if you have a strategy, follow the strategy. Don't well, like how do you change. know what the, how do you know what their strategy was? It seemed like the strategy was we're going to get him in after the buy. The buy moved up two weeks. They see signs in practice that he's healthy, that he's ready. They see what's happening with the other quarterbacks that, that they evaluated him higher than, and they said, "Let's go." For every reason Pat put out there, if you're a fan, you might miss a wild card weekend. I know the emotion of waking up wild card weekend and how exciting that would be, but 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 to see your quarterback succeed. Like to know how much fun I'm having with the one and four team to wake. Like I'm excited to watch my rookie play this week. Like it's different. It's fun. Um, and, and the dolphins now they see what they have and they get to go to 2021 opening day thinking way different than, Oh my God, it's Tua's first start. And I'm so jealous that Tua gets to play games right now where mistakes 
will matter. Burrow doesn't have that. Herbert doesn't have that. You can't make that. You can't pay for that. That is half of the evaluation process. Pro, uh, pro, uh, process is how yeah, will he I mean, play wonder, when though, it matters? You know, they have to take the offensive line now. They have to flip everyone's positions around. Uh, the receivers have to line up in totally different places because of his handedness. I wonder if that sort of thing can be can cause some awkwardness in the middle of a season. That's Maybe, why you very yeah, rarely yeah, have. The, the, the point is, Miami doesn't, doesn't don't give know. a shit. Well, they ought to. Why? Well, of course, they ought to. They well, give a shit. You don't use one. They give a shit about his season. development. Well, no, but you can't think that way. This is pro sports. No one thinks that way. That's how in, they in are football. thinking. That's how smart no, teams in, think. No, not in football. In football, short term and long term are equally as important, right? Well, there because is no short term. The short term is first round loss in the playoffs. Great. Well, Congra- you congratulations. Don't, you don't know that to a certainty. You know, all that you can really do is try to maximize what you've got today with a with an eye to tomorrow as well. You think Things he that, well, and you're the guy who advocates being a GM. You'd be the worst fucking anything, anything forward looking. You'd be like, well, it's kind of working. You can this for Miami's realistic. They know they beat the Jets. Yeah. They know they beat the well, Jags. They know they beat a beat up 49 team. Say. Well, you're not for it. You just forward. look. You, no, you, I mean, if, if it was your team, you would just look behind you. You'd be looking at dad ass all looking. the time. The team's obsessed with two, three years down the road. You can't predict that. They are not looking about two, three years down the road. They're thinking about next year, and they're not completely out of it yet. That also moved Correct. up their timeline. The fact that they're 500, being like, "Well, we need to get him in now. See how he does." I think Maybe. league median saying. play. It's. Listen, will will he make a mistake or two? Sure, but we always joke about Fitzpatrick. He's always gonna he makes silly mistakes, but when he's on, he makes such a handful of great plays Listen, that it all sets it. Tua, for their sake, I hope it works out. I'm saying it is by no means a slam dunk. It may be a disaster, but it might be great. But and, if it's a uh, disaster, then you know. It's, it's no, exactly. you don't know. You do. You, you need you to find out if he's fucking Rosen or not. So yeah, hold you on. Don't, you don't. You don't why know. are you going to say you don't know? You're going to say you don't know because he didn't get a full training camp because he didn't get preseason. Because you threw him why? in halfway through. Yes, absolutely. If you don't think that makes a difference, you're silly. You know that. And you know that that makes a difference. Come now. If, if he comes we're out not. and loses every single game, and looks like a disaster. They'll be like, well, we, we need to move on. They here. will we just free up with him next year because they are pot committed to him. No, they're not. Arizona. No, no, no. You think he'll be fourth overall? Yes. You, you could rewrite according, it. Just, according to Tim, yes. You, I'm telling you right now, you could bail and shoot. I'm not project. I'm not saying there, that's what's no. going to happen. I wouldn't bet on it. But if he ended up being a disaster who looked out of place and out of sorts, and their draft capital lined up and their draft board lined up with a prospect that they liked again, I don't think it. I don't think it'd be any crazier than Arizona doing it. Yeah, you, or you just end up like the Jets. Just let's let's keep digging. Keep digging down in this grave. Yeah, let's just stick with our guys. They're great. Now, it seems like Miami, again, Tim, maybe forward thinking, would like to have an actual assessment of the talent that they have in an on-field situation to make decisions about their future, especially with this much draft capital coming up in the offseason. Do you think their odds... That's still, that's still. Okay, but do you think their odds like... No, 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 hold on, hold on. I think you've misconstrued this entire thing. It's a slam dunk to play him, yes. No, it's not yes, a it is. slam dunk. Yeah, it, it is. Nobody that doesn't mean that he's going to be good. It's not a slam dunk he's going to be good. It's a slam dunk to play him right no, now. No, no. See, that, again, that's just tired group think that you're seeing it on Twitter already from some people. No. That, oh, you 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 dare not think otherwise or you're a fool. Like, again, I find Well, you that are a fool. The okay, fact that you're disagreeing with it really kind of just shows that Tim, the right side. Do you know, why, do you know why I'm disappointed in your line of thinking? Because you are a true fan. And 8-8 eight and eight is dog shit. I would rather my quarterback develop for the year on the bench, all things considered, than uh, than, than throw him into the fire. I'm sorry. I've seen my team do it twice. You're just such a fucking decade, pussy. And I've seen it's it not unbelievable. Work You're such it's a coward. The, well, no, it's not. When coward, you get called soft, soft Tim, this is why you're Charmaine soft. This sort of shit mm-hmm. right here. Yeah. To me, the only think, thing that matters is is finding out if we can win a Super Bowl. And and I know Miami's not in a position to win it this year, regardless of their 500 re- record through six games. And yeah, it's, well, uh, it's Super in, Bowl in or nothing. Sports, if my team can't no, contend, sports, I want two wins because I want to draft high. Sports, I never want to finish 7-9 and nine or 8-8 eight and eight unless, like, it's a 7-9 a and 8-8 eight, eight and eight and eight when I'm supposed to win, like, two games with a young team. That feels different. That's like in an pro exciting. sports. No teams treat a year they're competitive as a means to an end. It I has disagree. never happened. It is never going to happen. That is just the fact. What about the Sixers? That, and that was a um, an abject disaster. Okay, what about their the Astros? What about the Astros? Disaster. The Astros won because they cheated 
Otherwise, theirs would have been a disaster. But they built an the, amazing team. The Browns team, is not working the either. These really, really, really far-looking teams, each and every one of them, are not working out. The best way to succeed is looking a little bit into the future, but considering today, too, teams that are only worried about two, three years in advance, that doesn't work in pro sports. This doesn't seem it like they're thinking about two, work. three years in advance. It seems like they're thinking about next year. How can we be okay. as good and, next year and as we can? Okay. I agree with that, and that's why I think it can work. But I'm not certain that it can work, and I'm reticent about throwing off a guy's development pattern uh, when the other guy's playing So what if they good. lose every game, but he looks like, like the Chargers, for example, they have not won games, but the quarterback looks good. That's a good or bad thing. I think there's no obvious answer. That's my point. But I what are you grading? Like, what, what makes it a disaster? If Knowing he gets, that he's if he, bad? If he gets hurt. If he gets hurt, if he looks like okay. he's not If he gets hurt, I agree if he gets hurt and then it's determined that he wasn't fully Particularly him healthy. of all people, him of all these quarterbacks, if he gets hurt uh, and because they've started him too early, you have to fire people in that front office. Why? What are you talking work. about? What, okay, what, let's, say, let's, say, let's say he hurts his shoulder. He just no, gets hurt because, he, you know, he plays football, right? Yeah, no, it's true. What if he gets hurt in an injury? I'm related to the other injury. Are you going to blame the front office? That's no, not fair. No, but if he re-aggravates his previous injury and it's serious enough, people are going to lose their jobs, and they should because it would show mal- it would show kind of malice, in my opinion. I doubt that unless he has passed every sort of physical that they are throwing him out there, th- that would be – Tim is right. That would be irresponsible. Throwing a quarterback coming off an injury out there before he's 100 percent to play. I don't. I hope. I don't I'm see sure a scenario where they would do that. I'm sure he is 100. percent I always thought of Tua as more of a development QB than other guys. Uh, so I kind of thought he needed that development more than others, team. having lost a good season of his call end of his college career, having to do that rehab. I kind of thought he needed perhaps Who more do they time play? to sort of develop. But we'll see. The Jets I hope for the sake of the kid, I hope he thrives. His, his is a great story. Don't forget I'm that just, Tim hates Tua. Why? No, I mean, I don't like the Dolphins. And so I don't want to. he hates Alabama. Be, as a Jets fan, I don't like Alabama. But for him <laughs> he personally, hates Tua. This is where, this, great this where all of this is coming from. No, this would be a great story for him to succeed. But, like, it doesn't matter if we have Trevor Lawrence next year. We're going to have the best QB in the division. So it doesn't matter. Oh, so you're already in on the Jets tank, 0-16, huh? No, it's not a tank. You don't tank when you're bad. You just lose every game. They're not trying to tank. They're just stupid. They're going to – yeah, well, you know they're going to be so stupid they're not going to get the first pick, right? Do the Dolph- They're very capable of that. They're very capable of a lot of stupid things. I don't get my hopes up. I don't think you should start falling in love with the quarterback yet because – I'm not. There's I'm too not many actually. You just said that, that Lawrence is going to be the – Yeah, but how, I was did, just how, being, how, I was how just did, being – How did the Jets go from having the best quarterback <laughs> in the Division one year to having another guy who's also the best quarterback in the it, Division? It's funny, but I'll tell you what. This time <laughs> next year we'll be talking about Lawrence Brakes maybe. Those will be expensive. It may be pricier for me to buy into those, but anyway. Those will be expensive. <laughs> yeah, but you know, you gotta spend money to make money, Jeff. <laughs> Tim is someone who <laughs> Tim is someone who you could show him your iPhone. He's gonna crash the card market. <laughs> They better not, because those cards are going to be my meal ticket. <laughs> just like your, ba- my just like your Coca Cola cup and my Batman Forever mug, and my Planters <laughs> peanut jar, and the ragu can I can't get. Ragu can, yeah. What's this ragu? It discontinued ragu, and so I went out hunting for jars of it. <laughs> and like, I went to the place where I knew it was, and I asked the guy, the the grocery. Store employees like, do you have any ragu? Like, there's this blank spot on the shelf. He said, no, we haven't got any left. I said, well, could you go back and look? Was it a, like, no. <laughs> this place that you went to a uh, recycling facility? No, it was a grocery store. I'd seen it there not that long ago. You wouldn't even back and look. Anyway, I don't need to get, 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 go on a rant about that. Anyway, I would have liked to have had a can of ragu to add to my collection. Tim, is, like, the worst, get Tim is the worst kind of customer. When I worked in the grocery store, I knew what we had out back and what we didn't have out back and what we were out of. Because, you know, you're back there. You stock it. And then you bring it out. And someone would be like, do you have any, let's say, pineapples? Because I worked in produce. Be like, no, we're all out of pineapples. Can you go back and check? It's like, no. I know we're out of pineapples. 
Tim if I'm Dog- going for a dragon fruit and you don't have any out there, I'd ask you to go look to see if you have any. Yeah, and, and I would tell you, I know it's fucking out back, you moron. Just humor me then. Why? Why, why do I want to humor you? You're being I'm a piece of customer. shit customer. Yeah, and you're being I'm a piece of shit. Customer. Just because, no, no, you fucking entitled piece of shit. You don't, get to, you don't get to go there I'm and mistreat you. Yeah, but you don't even spend money. You're in there just trying to get like dragon fruit and fucking ragu and walking out. Dragon fruit is not cheap, son. I'm guessing. Oh, yeah, because we found out earlier this week, uh, Jeff, that Tim doesn't even look at the prices of things at the grocery store. He, he just buys. Elite. Yeah, someone called me a grocery store elite. I have no idea what that means. Uh, anyway. Anyway, Tim, based on his uh, perception of how football teams should be run, it'd be like you showed him an iPhone. And you're like, man, this iPhone's pretty sweet. I know. Like, everyone else is just like, yeah, man, look at all you can do on an iPhone. He's like, yeah, I'm not ready to get past pagers yet. The pagers are really solid. I don't want to look too far into the future. I want to go with this pager. That's how Tim would run football teams. That that is his mentality. No, it's not. Yeah, my it mentality. is. That and is for the record, mentality. I had an iPhone before you did. That is true. I had that bad Android. <laughs> you certainly did. First, first, you first gen Android. Not great. It's better than our friend's Palm Pilot, but not by much. Second half season games, Burrow versus Tua, Herbert versus Tua, Herbert versus Tua, Masters Sunday. Good thing you don't I'm, have that buy on Master Sunday after all. I am, I am going. I I I talked about this for a previous major. I think I got to get myself my own personal like Airbnb that weekend. <laughs> Just so you can be away from everybody. Everybody. I the may market be able is to get you a Airbnb. discount on that. Yeah, Paul can get you some cheap <laughs> some cheap bucks on Airbnb. Like I just want to eighty percent on the dollar. Talk to me. Buffalo at the Jets. The Jets. Oh are, God! The Jets are thirteen point dogs at home. Forty six is the over under. Somehow it feels like it's going to be higher than this. At one point, the books Vegas is confused with the Jets because there's no number they can come close to covering. Like if you if it was you and you didn't see what the number was and it's thirteen, what would you set this line at? Sixteen. 20? 15 and a half. I, I would have set it at after the way Buffalo played the last two weeks. I would have laid it set it at fourteen. Buffalo's third down defense was beyond pathetic in its last two games. Well, Buffalo game. you know what? Soft. You know what? That's okay against the Jets. Yes. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That's okay. I, 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 I like our Buffalo. cards on the table. The Bills are going to be my survivor pick this week, right? We're, we're eventually that picking against a team like the Jets every week eventually does blow up on you. It happens almost every year with these sorts of teams, but this is not the spot. Uh, not, not the spot. The Bills after two losses. Yeah, if the, exactly. if the Bills yeah. wrote in like losses. six and zero. Oh, could be in trouble. And not necessarily to lose, but potentially to lose, but just to yes, not cover. Exactly. Buffalo having off two pretty bad and two primetime public losses where the whole world, you know, their opinion of the Bills right now is not high compared to what it was two weeks ago. Uh, yeah, they should come in and they should take care of this game. Literally a easily. week ago. 31 to three. We're, like this is a 31 to three type game. It's so funny to think of the opinion of the Bills a week ago. It hasn't really changed for me. Chiefs are we'll amazing. The, the Titans down. are amazing. Uh, Bills are going to win this thing by three yeah. touchdowns. The only way it's close if, if like the Jets do silly things, like they get a special teams housing, the Bills like gas can a punt snap or something. I, I, I... Darnold's back. Mimsy is going to be back. Tim, you called him the best receiver in the draft. No, I said amongst, and I the hope Jets are not going to go zero in sixteen. But this is certainly not going to be even a close game. Yeah, you you can't. I can't imagine. Like I said we're teasing the Bills down. This is this should be a route. This this is still short, too short of a number. But you know, I, I get it. Like, who wants to lay fourteen points with Buffalo right now? But I, I guess no, no people do because the Jets are uh, the stink on Correct. the Jets is far worse than teams the team <laughs> that, that lost to to Buffalo. The books don't really know what to do with the Jets. They don't know how big to make these numbers. I don't know how they get fifty fifty. On the Jets at the moment. Well, you know what? I'm going to change my And pick. I hope that Gase doesn't get fired. I'm, I really hope he doesn't right now because he needs to suffer through this. I'm gonna, if he wants to quit, that's one thing. I'm going to change my pick to the Jets. Because he made it a survivor? Kind of. Because they're 0-6 against the spread and they can't stop. They can't keep not covering. Well, I mean, they're, they're 0-6. Tim's looking in the past again. I mean, teams don't go 0-16 against the spread. It doesn't happen. So... Case for the Jets. They have the best quarterback in the division back, right, Tim? 
I still think Darnold's really good. It just won't be with us. Well, he's he's likely to return this week. They have Mimsy, yes. who you called the Michael Thomas of the draft. I McCle- said he, I hoped that he could be that good. What's his name? I called him a McLaren in the in the garage. Yes. Home team, division game, playing a team on a short week. Two short weeks in a row, actually. Yeah, that, aren't the Bills like the the team of the state? Yeah, they're the official team of New York, as the <laughs> only team in New York. But this game is in New Jersey, so it's okay. It just there's. I, if I was going to bet the Jets, which I just won't bet this game, but I think this gets up to like 16 by game. Might, it might. It might. Well, once it crosses 14, there's nothing stopping it. Yeah. So I'll go with the Jets plus 13 here. I just don't know who's going to bet the Jets, so I will. Let's do it. Green Bay and Houston, the battle of the two worst run defenses in the league. Green Bay is a three and a half point favorite on the road, 56 is the over-under in this game. Can the Texans win a game where they have to rely on David Johnson? I don't know, but I love love him in this game. Do you? I I would like, again, I would like them more if Green Bay didn't get embarrassed in front of everyone's eyes on Sunday. I get it, but the Texans also lost in in pretty embarrassing form, too, against an arch rival. Their season is now over. The Titans are 5-0. They're 1-5. They'd have to, like, win, what, go 10 and one down the stretch to make the playoffs. Like that's not going to happen or whatever it would be. So their season is kind of done. So now they're just sort of playing loose with house money. And this is the, they are going to be a very, very dangerous team in the second half of the season because they're loaded with talent and they got nothing to lose. So green Bay is is precisely the type of team. Green Bay does not want to be facing Texans are Texans should cover. I think they got a real chance to win. We're teasing them up. They're on a short list for super locks. I, you know, the offense is clicking. As long as all those guys in Houston stay healthy, they can score. And we saw it last week against the Titans. Again, they scored. We saw it against the Vikings. They can score. Uh, Green Bay obviously can put up a lot of points too, but they looked lethargic against Tampa. Uh, I I don't know what to make of Green Bay, but I know that I think that Houston's offense is quite talented. I expect to be super high scoring. It could go either way. And in that case, I think Houston will be, or sorry, Green Bay will be a very popular team. And I think the Texans are the way to play it. I don't actually disagree with that logic at all. It makes a lot of sense. I like Green Bay to come back and just kind of stomp Houston to the ground. With Jair Alexander, you take out one of the two receivers. Then you really are relying on David Johnson to try to go gash this defense. Well, you too have the worst run defense in the league. And Aaron Jones couldn't do anything against Tampa. He's going to do it all in this game. You take some of the pressure off Rodgers. Just seems like a nice bounce back bounce back spot for them and that doesn't feel like winning by a field goal that feels like winning by a few touchdowns so i like green bay you mad at houston for not covering that game last week a little bit but that's not where i'm going that was just a bad break the titans it's I not mean, a bad break when you bet on bad teams that's what happens yeah 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 fine as a houston guy like deshaun in my 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 home league i'm excited it seems like a lot of what tim said like oh, yeah. we're gonna get well when your defense is so bad i mean deshaun might lead the league in passing yards and go one in 15 yeah no i'm excited it looks like they'll play i guess as tim was alluding to sort of some carefree and fun football uh Talking about them as a super lock is kind of scary. And I think they'll have their moments of looking really cool. And maybe it'll be on prime time in like division games. But I I need to just go on a a thing for a second. This Aaron Rodgers. There's a reason he is for as great as he is. He is flawed like my guy, Dustin Johnson. There is uh, for different ways. But this guy is. He's always got something on his mind that that dance he did when they went up 10 nothing. I promise you he thought about it all week and he's talking to like an ex-girlfriend on the internet by doing a dance in the middle of a big football game. And what happened after that? He played like complete ass. He threw two picks. He let Tampa into the game and it's almost like he stopped trying cuz he's like, "No, I'm not letting my stat line show a third pick." And he's allowed to suck and make mistakes cuz he's freaking amazing and I'm going to pick him this week. Because he's not going to play like that again. Um, anytime those like really good quarterbacks get really embarrassed, you just it's an easy blind go to the window. I'm not overthinking the game, but this is a vindictive guy that that crosses names off with lipstick, uh, <laughs> and he was planning that dance in like the mirror on a Wednesday. Yeah, just there's a, no one less spontaneous than th- Aaron Rodgers. There, he's a weird, weird freaking cat. 
Um, you guys do an awful lot of personality projecting on people you've never met. He no, he puts it out there, man. Yeah, I mean, you got to be if you can read body language. And he's been in our lives for fourteen years. Like we can phony, sort of, but he's amazing. Exactly, he's amazing. Some people he's are amazing. phony and good. He's yeah. he's not J. Ro bad, but he's bad. Well, people would say that the biggest phony on the planet is Tim Andercast. Different. It's dumb. different. Rogers goes on uh, on Pat McAfee's show, and, and he's he seems, good and he's he seems, real. He seems like a real dude. He's good and he's it. real, but he's also like it's this edge of like there's always something there, Paul. Uh, I don't know, man. What a what? A, what is you would something. never see those. He's just got a chip on his shoulder at all times. Like the world is out to get him. I don't want to make this such a charmed life. Like it's so silly. Yeah, I, this is like a horrible analogy potentially. But sometimes uh -oh. when I like look at Aaron Rodgers and like what he's got issues with everything and everybody, it's like you're a superstar quarterback and you're amazing. Like. Why do you always have to have this um, break-even point? It's like the, the the president. You're the president. You're apparently really rich, and you're the president. Like, what do you still have to, like, always be proving to people? Like, you're so good. But Some he's, people have, yeah, self-consciousness or security issues. I'm, and, no and you could say that I'm, like, this is just me and, and, and my boy Timbo over here picking on Aaron and and maybe that's a fair, absolutely fair criticism. And it's the reason that so many guys don't like putting themselves out there at all. Because the second they kind of show us anything, idiots like me, like, dissect it seven different ways like I'm doing right now. Would you prefer to be Tom Brady, who you legitimately don't know anything about? You can project whatever Except you want. Except that he has him. crazy beliefs about Coca-Cola being poison and loving avocado ice cream and... Uh... Yeah, he lives a healthy lifestyle. Yeah, I like football you. games. I like Cheating. everything Cheating about games. Tom Brady. The only thing that I really can't stand about him, like even the Uggs, because I'm an Ugg guy. Like, that's cool by me. He's a duffer when I, like I am. When I heard this guy brought his own lunch to Augusta, that that was like... If you're committed to the diet, you're committed to the diet. You know who's... I, listen, I bring my lunch to a lot of places, too. Don't... That's why I get to have the good pecs and the abs. I Listen, I came in here. You look swollen. In like a good way. Yeah, I got the workout bench right there. I didn't they, even they notice they it was right the there. They closed the gyms. I got a workout bench right but over I, there. But I had asked you what was up with your workouts because I noticed you looked like swollen. And little did I know you like pointed like five feet that way to show me, oh, that's where the setup is. It's a commitment though. You're either committed to it or you're not committed I to agree, it. I agree, but I don't, you do not have to bring a bag of lunch to Augusta. No, 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 no. You don't have to. Why do you care what he does? Honestly. I don't know. I think it's such a pretentious fucking thing to do. Because you're at the Masters. No, not Masters tournament play. Like, not the actual tournament. He's there playing golf. Like, as an invited guest. I guarantee you he has a schedule of times of when he has to eat and when what he is ingesting into his body at that time of day. I guarantee you. So don't fucking play. Stay That's home. How you play until you're 43. Yeah. Stay home. Don't take the I'm invitation. sorry he doesn't do it the way that you want him to do it. Yeah. Eat. Eat with I'm the chef. I'm, 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 I'm on Jeff's side. Of course, you two. I'm on Jeff's side here. You guys have no discipline whatsoever. Well, no, but no there's a I don't walk into discipline. a place like that with a bag of lunch. You don't get yeah, invited. There's a to difference places between like being disciplined <laughs> and being an obsessive weirdo. There is a fine line there. And if you don't know where the line is, that's a problem. I don't think that there's anything. Of, I mean, obviously, there's an obsession to continue keeping his body maintained in the exact right time so he can continue to play football until he's 50 years old. You have your people. Call the chef there. They'll make it as close as possible. That's the best we can do. You do it's not, you do not walk into the property with a bag of lunch. I remember 20 years ago reading an article in SI about Bill Romanowski. And Bill, they like, described his workout Fish routine oil? and his supplement routine. And at the end of the thing, it said that, you know, he always used to have at night maybe the smallest little slice of cheesecake and what a cheater uh, he was to, to his diet. And I remember reading that article going, anybody that obsessed is a weirdo. And what did we find out about Bill Romanowski later on? 
He was a real weirdo. This yeah, is before um, I think he even uh, spat in, also, in his, name, his name's face. No, uh, I don't think... Feeling... I, I don't think he was being completely forthright in that article either, considering he was on the biggest amount of juice you could be on. <laughs> yeah, well, did, I did, think he did, was just lying about what those supplements did, were. Did, yes. did he mention that in the article? That he was on steroids? Yeah, it was a Rick Riley? I, think it was I Rick don't... Riley. Yeah, Rick Riley sucks. Sure. Rick Riley, well, yeah, he's, he's like, really he's the Yeah, really he's the absolute or 1999. Yeah, you thought he was good then because you didn't have access to the internet. Once the internet came along, Rick Riley got exposed for being like a shitty yeah. writer but oh once the internet the came along he actually FI. got a big payday to move i think to espn and then he got exposed but that's a guy that literally in 2020 if he was like 22 years old he would never like make it yeah I, I know i, I know industry. a guy who kind of does the same thing rick <laughs> riley does and has been out of work for eight years it, but it's always trying to break in it's like you're not going anywhere you're, like, you're bad at this i hate to tell you uh, and I don't think your analogy of Romanowski squeaking in, sneaking in some cheesecake from his fridge is the same as bringing a bag of lunch. No, it just struck me as that the type of person that would live in that way 24 se- Like, there seemed to be something unbalanced about it. Like Aristotle talks about the good life is not having being too deficient in anything, nor too obsessive in anything, but finding that golden mean of, of moderation. And that the happy life is all about trying to figure out what is the, the eudaimon- eudaimonic life is all about trying to find, you know, perfect balance in all things. And when you see something like that, you see that kind of obsession, you know, there's something corrupted going on here. Now, it may be out of the best intentions, but if you're an impartial observer, you look at that and go, okay, there's something that doesn't add up here. And it's just, it, you just do. It's just intuitive. You know that that's the case. I completely, I dis- Jeff, I Jeff completely is tapping into that. disagree. There is a certain regiment you need to follow if you want to be the peak of what you do. And a lot of that has to do with organization. Speaking from my own experience as someone who can become rather obsessive about things, but I'm more obsessive, uh, obsessive now about organization. When am I doing things every single day? And it's hard to really plan out your entire week. Can you plan out the next four weeks? Can you plan out the next eight weeks? The only way that you can really do that is try to do as much of the same routine as that you get yourself into at the same times every day. Like I eat but at you the same would... I eat at the same times every day. Obviously I go off of that. Yeah. Then I feel shitty about it. But when but I can stick to can I, shut, shut up. <laughs> let me talk. Like this, for example. I just wanted to give a little soliloquy here. And I have moron boy here fucking stepping in, talking about, yo, you know what? Tom Brady should be eating Oreos with orange juice. I didn't say that, but go ahead. I'll mute myself. The biggest thing is if you can hit, it's about productivity and longevity. And that's what we're seeing from Tom Brady. Not everyone in football is like that, but in order for him to be at his peak, throwing your routine and scheduling off in just a little way can cause huge ramifications. It's like people who don't drink don't go out partying at the bar with their friends because just being around that sort of situation can throw them into a spot where they don't want to be in. And I'm not saying that it's akin to like alcoholism and things like that, but at the same time, if you're a person who is really structured and you need to keep that structure and so you don't spiral out of control a little bit. Maybe he knows. He's not like Bill Romanes. He can't have the little taste of cheesecake because that will just set him into eating the entire cheesecake. Some people have different needs with this sort of thing, and maybe he's like that. You guys aren't, apparently. No, no, I agree. I agree with what you're saying, but I think you also need to appreciate, I think you do, that there is a line upon which it does get into the, the – you know, does become a little too weird. I'm not right? the, that, yeah, but I'm not the greatest quarterback of all time. No, Try, no, trying, right, to, but- trying to defy age in a sport where age basically just takes you out of it five years ago. From yeah, where he was. that's right. But I, I guess if we're, we're kind of talking about what it is to live the good life uh, in that type of obsessiveness doesn't seem like it's conducive to, you. to, to the good life. Well, I mean, not just to me. Like, I do, mean, you, to, do you think that Brady is a completely unhappy person? No, I, I, can, I, I cannot evaluate that. I can't evaluate that. He doesn't he's, show manifestly whether he is or he isn't. I suspect that deep down he may not be as happy as you'd think, given his obsessiveness. But I'm not a I'm not a, a, a trained psychologist. I'm not a diagnostician. I don't know that. But I do know that oftentimes we throw ourselves, and I can speak for myself, throw ourselves into obsessions that we do not want to break, as an opportunity to sort of like try to forget about feeling bad about something or whatever. And that's not conducive to the good life. Moderation is. I and think I'm guilty of anybody of knowing it, but moderation in all things is the mark of, of, of happiness. I think Brady is an incredibly happy soul in person. I don't feel the same with Aaron Rodgers, though. Why? 
just sense there's like because you sense it's something. Just, yeah. Doesn't so. he? But he he carries himself in a glum manner. Sure. Aaron Aaron Rodgers seems like a really and I could be snar- a curmudgy. He just seems like a snarky too, asshole. Yeah. That's just how. Yeah. It well, must be how the- I act most of the day. <laughs> I don't know. No, I don't agree. I'm. I, you guys really do assess people you've never met before pretty uh, in depthly here. Yeah. Don't give me an inch. That's why they don't want to give an inch. Yeah, I wouldn't either. Otherwise, what should what should we do? Just just shrug our shoulders and say, "Well, who can know?" I guess I can't have an opinion on it. Like that doesn't. I don't want to say. I don't want to sound we, like Tim. Okay, you wouldn't take a stance earlier on whether it was right or wrong for the Dolphins to be putting two in. Well, it could be either well, way. Think, but you have very distinct. So t- you have very distinct opinions on Roger, Aaron Rodgers' personality traits. I he's think the only. Esoteric, he's the esoteric only. Esoteric listener knows where I was going on the two thing. They he's know the only saying. Super Bowl champion quarterback I could ever picture doing that. Okay, I cannot believe he. If did they had that. won the game. It would have been great. Didn't win the game. It didn't win the game, and it spoke volumes for what happened next. He th- because they lost. If they had won, you wouldn't bring it up. No, not just hilarious. because they lost. The next possession, Pat. You know what? Thank you for reminding me this. Pick six. They go up to... It wasn't just a pick six. It was third and down, and it was this, like, limp little, I'm on my back foot, my shit don't stink, I'm Aaron (laughs) Rodgers, I can get this anywhere, and he literally duck-buttered a ball. He's amazing. I'm picking him this week because he's going to bounce back huge. But but I'm telling you, sometimes you... No, I've said enough. Said no. I think I'm going to come in next week and do a profile of you guys from knowing you. I'm Andrew fucked on, up. I'm Andrew fucked online, up. I don't pretend Andrew to be online normal. Online accounts, and I'm going to reveal some sad truths about people. I, 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 I me all the oh, time. You no, know, they, 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 they don't actually. Though I will hit you with the real truth. No, I get. I trust me. I, and you, I, and as a, just a quick spoiler, you don't want to hear the real truths. Listen, I do. I'm not afraid of the truth. You would be surprised to know how direct and real me and my friends are with each other. Mm-hmm. Yeah, do you think people sugarcoat things for me? So, no, no, they don't. Someone actually asked me about you earlier this week. What does that mean? I asked you just like about Tim, because like you're turning into Tim, as most people have noticed, just being crazy. Are you the Tim of your friend group? Like Tim is no, us? no, no, no. But see, you close. say that he wouldn't. If we I just, don't even think I'm. I, I think I'm misconstrued too see, in the way. No, that, we got way deeper than me because we, we have even fr- talk, we have other we, friends we rip on more than me. We talk. We actually have this often, and I'm not even like in the final two as to like who's the weirdest. Who's the cast? Yeah, I'm not even. I wouldn't even make the final two. And you could cold call like my group chat right now. <laughs> I wouldn't make the final two. I wouldn't do it. it. It's something we talk about. Do it. Yeah, but Cust is bluff. Cust is do it. Cust isn't Call the one who group. gets made fun of. And we of. are biting. We are biting. But Cust isn't the one who gets made fun of. He's just the really weirdo. Are no, you no, the no, weirdo? no. I, 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 I like to think I am an authentic soul. So does Cust. Are you living your truth? Listen, I march to the beat of my own drum. I don't care. I don't, but the, I don't think I'm normal. I don't crave to be normal. I don't want to well, be maybe normal. Maybe Aaron Rodgers bounces I'm the beat of his I'm now looking on drum, too. I think people who are strive to be normal are the biggest losers on the planet. Because n- what is that? Like, you're just trying to fit into societal norms. I do me. I understand, though. I am incredibly flawed. Oh, well, yeah, we all are. Severely. It's not where I was going to go with this. No, I'll save it for next week. I don't know. You could. You, that's that's what they call SEO value, folks. Wait actually, till next week. That's actually called a tease. I don't too. know what this means. Yeah, it's all the same. Get that know? group chat. Get that group chat on the line. Yeah, the you people gotta, you gotta demand it next you week. Call them right all now. of Jeff's buddies. Carolina at New Orleans. Oh, football. Yeah, we're back to football. Well, we were talking <laughs> about football players. Minus seven and a half. For New Orleans at home, 51 is the over-under coming off a bye. Michael Thomas is back. He's not punching his teammates anymore. Maybe they (laughs) figured something out over the bye. They should have both corners back and healthy. I I don't know what public sentiment is on the Saints at this moment, but I had mentioned to you before they went into the bye week uh, and got that win over the Chargers. They've played like absolute ass so far this year, and they seem like they could just kind of still be on cruise control and get to the playoffs. Like They have time to figure this out. And if we remember back to last year, their defense was bad through like the first eight weeks of the season. Then it got really good. So it feels yep. like there's a switch that can be flipped with them. And maybe coming out of this bye week, it's going to be there. I don't necessarily know if I trust Breeze too much. And it's a Teddy B revenge game from last year. 
But if the defense can start playing back up uh, a lot better than they've been playing so far this season and look like last year's Saints defense, I feel like they can kind of stomp Carolina here. And I like no chance for No chance for CMC to come back, right, for this game? Uh, I believe he's been ruled yeah. out for this week. I like okay. the Saints. Yeah, I do too. Off the bye. Don't love them, but like them. Yeah. Not teasing them, that's for sure. Carolina, uh, the, the Saints look like they can exploit Carolina. Doesn't Carolina have some injuries also coming in on the defense? Carolina played so disappointingly against Chicago. I watched quite a bit of that ball game. And they still should have won. They, they could have won. They should have won. They made a, a surfeit of mistakes. Don't think they're very well coached. Uh, and they just didn't didn't get it done. But I thought they were every bit as good as the Bears, if not better. And uh, anyway, so they will present a challenge to New Orleans. I think the seven and a half is almost too much, but I will I will take the Saints without any particular faith. You went up to the mic and then you leaned back. And you're saying, I'm just I'm contemplating your whole shtick. Yeah, I know that was the whole point of me saying it. <laughs> See, now you've got him rattled. I know I'm rattled. <laughs> you can't rattle me. That's true. Tim is unflappable when it comes to almost anything. So it's a round of Saints? Really? What kind of water is that, Jeff? I did not expect the round of Saints for minus seven and a half. Oh, off a bye. Yeah. I agree with you, Pat. I think this team is just, they've gotten by and they're ready to play a peak game. Cla- I'll tell you what, though. If they don't, don't be afraid to start picking against them. If they really don't show up for this game, then you can maybe start to talk about them in a funeral in a funeral basis. Yeah, I, I think that's completely fair. Pittsburgh at Tennessee. Tennessee undefeated. Two point dogs at home. Fifty one and a half is the over under. They seem like such smoke and mirrors. They're the bears of the AFC. Shout out to Vrabel. I mean, every, I think everyone's seen that Warren Sharp thread by now. But I'd want Mike Vrabel as my coach. He did it against the Patriots last year in the playoffs, if people recall. Like using the rules to his advantage. Yeah. To, yeah, like this, that's great. The guy's really you think he's like a, a meathead jock. That's not who Mike Vrabel is. He's a very cerebral coach who like is like a mixture of like Aristotle and an encourager. I, I kind of like it. He I would ch- he has quoted himself as saying yes. he would chop off his dick to win a Super Bowl. That is a coach. I yes. would go through the freaking wall for. I, I, I as a agree. fan, as a player, this team I'm is freaking. The this team's freaking remarkable. Coins taking Tennessee. You're taking I'm the Steelers. I'm taking the Steelers. Also, I am worried about a couple injuries to Pittsburgh. You worried about I Bush? I thought being we were going to get a different line here. I thought it was going to be Titans. Isn't DeCastro also out. still out? Is DeCastro still out? I, I, Bush is Devin done Bush the year. being out hurts. Devin Bush being out does make a difference. He was their best defensive player, I, I, other than maybe Fitzpatrick. So I get it. I just think Tennessee has been living so charming, charmingly that sooner or later, something's that the, 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 this can't keep going on like this sooner or later, they're going to get God. So let's say it's this week. I mean, the Steelers are pretty good. Pretty, it's a pretty good spot for the Steelers. So I'm going to take them. I don't love it. I mean, Tennessee had to play. And as Jeff loves to say, Tennessee basically played five quarters last week. Uh, against an arch rival off a the short Steel- off a super short week too, playing on a Tuesday yeah, and the Steelers you know had that thing wrapped up by half so <laughs> they were just they were just uh, you know puttering along in second gear for the whole second half so I like the Steelers here I won't be shocked at the Titans when the Titans haven't lost yet but I will play Pittsburgh Pittsburgh's undefeated as well right yeah yes, they they're both undefeated it's the only game. real good game of the week, the bye week this, the this is the canceled game yes. yes this is the first game that got postponed <laughs> So I wanted to lock in Pittsburgh at minus two, but I had those same reservations as you guys kind of do with this Tennessee team. Like I could see them losing and somehow covering the two points. Like they're one of yeah. those teams. Like they'll go for two they did and, yeah. and lose, yeah. but lose by one. They're weird. I don't like them. I can't figure them out. I didn't like, I was watching that game. This whole, I didn't, this whole two point conversion thing. I mean, I'm in your head and I got you rattled. Don't has I? its merit. No, no, no. <laughs> you I'm, sure? I'm okay. You can't be more. Well, you you know what? You would fit. Your personality would fit well 
with my group chat because it's like equally biting. We don't give free passes. Like we people we, have seen our group chat. Our group chat is vicious. Yeah, we call you call you out on the carpet. If no one else, like that's why you have your real friends. Like we will we will call you out. We'll call you out. Your and your successes aren't like successes. They're like funny to your friends. If that makes any sense. Your successes are funny to your friends. Like things, I don't really. Like, we find humor in everything about each other. Okay, that's good. Friends. Yeah, exactly. Um, that's why you don't live online. Yes. 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 Despite what you may think. Um, like, I didn't like the Houston going for the two-point conversion. And I didn't just because... And I normally do. And even, like, Ron Rivera going for his, I thought was ridiculous only because how did Washington, like, have that lead? A fumble recovery. How have they scored? Daniel Jones running over everywhere. You're the better team. When you are the better team, when you've established you're the better team, I think you need to take that to overtime. I know ten, uh, Houston wasn't the better team, but the way that game was trending, they, they should have just uh, kicked it. Yeah. I'm for going for it every time. I would just want to win the game. I need two yards to Yeah, I'm not to, for it every game. time because it, 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 it's got to be context dependent. But however, I do agree with the Vikings going for it. And I did agree with the Texans going for it. I was less certain about the Washington one. I thought that you probably actually had a better chance winning it, taking it to overtime than a two. I think they had a better than 50% chance going OT to win. Yeah, we're the uh, better team. Game. Like Ron Rivera had a sense we are the like, better team. That's where the analytics here. have to come in, right? Like you have a 50% chance to win on the two pointer, but if you're the better team, you probably have a better than 50% chance to win in overtime. What so did the Giants do in that game? Going. What did Washington yeah. do in that game? More well, than Daniel Jones for a touchdown. More than Daniel Jones just break like two runs and and a fumble return. I, I would have been terrified to turn the ball over to Tennessee again because I've watched them, you know, just tear up and down the field. So if you could end the game there in that sense, fine with it because like God knows what happens if you give the ball away. Uh, and I yeah to to that way. point with ten with Houston, I do like it. And as we mentioned earlier, I like the vibe that it feels like will be happening in Houston. It seems like for the rest of the year, Cornell's just like, F it. Like, we're going. Well, he's, like, been he's, like, he's like 95 yeah. years old. They were Listen, even going no for one... some fourth downs in that game that, that like, Cornell's probably never gone for in his life. Romeo knows this is probably the last time he'll ever coach in the NFL, and he's a head coach for the rest of the year. And so, like, everyone's just slinging out there and having fun. I like Pittsburgh. Uh, for me, at this point, like, Tennessee's just got, like, w- like it's got to end on black one game for them. Why not against, like, a really good team? It's the one team that presents, and we'll see how their defense looks without Bush, because that could be a, such a substantial loss that it completely affects the defense. But they have yet to face a team that has a run-stopping unit and a secondary like Pittsburgh does. It's usually one or the other. And Tennessee's very good at taking advantage of that. You have bad run defense. Derrick Henry's going to run for 200 yards. You have a good run defense. We're going to sell out to stop Derrick Henry. Then Ryan Daniel is going to go over the top. And he's been very effective at doing mm-hmm. that. Pittsburgh can rush forward and get into your backfield. And they can stop the run the exact same way. So I like Pittsburgh. Don't love it, though. Scares me on the super lock. Dallas at Washington. The last of the early games. Washington's a one and a half point underdog at home. I'm going to take Washington. I think Washington wins this game. Put them in a division lead. I'll go next. I'm going to take Washington and Pat. This is two straight games now. The Cowboys. I can't. We'll go one at a time. Last week when breaking down that game, what did we do here? At least what I said. How much I love betting teams. If they're a good team, I want to pick them in that first game with the backup quarterback. We came to the decision. Dallas, not a good team. Therefore, they cannot qualify for this theory that I truly believe on my perception. It's at over 80%. The other perception 80% theory that I believe I have that I will not take the Cowboys with this week is getting absolutely tarmatted on Monday night football. That team the next Sunday. I don't even trust these guys, the Redskins. I don't trust the footballs, the footballs. I don't even trust these, these Cowboys. They cannot be. It was, it was so cringe. You had to turn it off. I I I didn't, I didn't watch the fourth quarter. It was so cringe. You felt bad to feel bad for Cowboys, for Cowboy fan, for Cowboy nation. It takes a lot. And it was there in levels of cringe. Like I got some people I know in a past life that make these really embarrassing 
internet videos and you wonder if they have any real friends in their life to tell them like, whoa. Now, in fairness, people do that to me and you too. No, but we're actually, well, there's actually like some level of a return here, at least for me <laughs> and substantially for you, which is a little different. Uh, it, like extreme cringe level. That's what I felt like watching the Cowboys play. So it was like watching the British version of The Office. Yes, that's a very good analogy. <laughs> I guess I guess so. I, also, it's a short week for Dallas, and they have the worst defense in football. I cannot believe that there's a, that that this that those two theories. I can't go to the wall with a team on one of them. That's how bad I guess I feel they are. Is Dallas now undervalued, Tim? Being zero and six against the spread. Yeah, probably I'll take Dallas only because I really don't like this Washington team. You you have picked no, Dallas no. every week, by the way. <laughs> yeah, no, yeah, I, I know. I, even though I think Dallas is bad. Washington is worse. Washington is still dining out on that week one victory a little bit, I think. Washington showed up against, and I'll give them their due. They showed up against the Giants. The Giants are terrible. But so are the Cowboys. <laughs> the Giants, the Cowboys are really, but the Cowboys have have mm -hmm. playmakers, and Washington doesn't have playmakers. So when they, they, when they the Cowboys and Giants played before the Dak injury, you felt like these two teams were equal. I I, I know it's a problem. But yeah, you like, were on. I was on Dallas that game. You actually were smart enough before that. At to one see and what a half, happening. it's just at one and a half. It's a pick 'em. Who do I think wins the game? And I think Dallas wins. Okay, I mean, I, I get it. What do you make? Yeah, of like those I'm not. Stories? I'm not passionate. I'm not passionate about it by any means. To go back to Aaron Rodgers, maybe he was onto something with this. Mike McCarthy sucks as a coach, and oh, like he's the worst. No, I mean, who doesn't? Who doesn't go for 58 yard field goals to cut it the the deficit to 22 points? But he, I mean, but he, who, he who but he do that. He subscribed to Pro Football Focus in the off season, though. He knows all of it. Listen, for all of the things I make fun of Rodgers for, I will I will join him on on the team. McCarthy was trash. We talked about this at all points when yeah. the signing was made at last year, and I I heard enough. McCarthy's fate was signed, sealed, delivered with me. When a, a player like Jeff Saturday, who I respect, who, if you have any concept of who Jeff Saturday is, you wouldn't say a bad word about anybody, like pretty much acknowledged like three years ago, this is the dumbest coach he's ever been around. He called the like same we run, yeah, that we run the same play. Like that, like that's when Mike McCarthy was dead forever in my eyes. Like that he would have such a hard time regaining any level of of respect for me wanting to to back him as an NFL coach. And clearly through this experiment because it's Dallas it's cringe but there's a level of like entertainment that comes with it now when Dallas is bad it's entertaining but I guess can you frame Dallas being bad just because the quarterback thing like is that a free pass for them no I don't think so because it's not I mean Dalton was not good in that game now the offensive line is bagged up and they can't block for him which is a huge this which is the main reason I'm taking and Washington their best player fumbled three times and set up well scores. that's it Elliot gave up two fumbles that basically threw the game into uh, into di disarray Right off the, the hop. Who knows how that game finished? They still probably lose, but it's not a route probably if he hangs on to the football. I, I don't know, man. I, I don't know what's going on with Dallas. I still think they're better than than, than they <sighs> look. Pat's making but. a – Pat's point that they might now be, like, actually undervalued is probably legitimate, though. They might be because – but I just – the reason I'm still taking Washington is one, I think that the best unit – with Andy Dalton under center, the best unit on the field is Washington's front seven. Yep. And they're going to be in the backfield this entire game. Ron Rivera is a much better coach than Mike McCarthy. That's worth a few points, too. I don't know what the big difference between, like, Andy Dalton and Kyle Allen is at this point. That could be a wash for all we know. And Dalton could be a lot better week two. He really could be. But, again, this is a short week. And, well, I think that Dallas may be undervalued. Washington, no one likes. As Tim just kind of pointed out, no one wants to bet on Washington. It was even like last week. No one wants to bet on Washington except for us. Like, they have such a stink on them that, you know, you could make them five-point dogs here and people would still take Dallas, it seems, at some point. So, I don't know. I think that this line is trying to sucker you into taking Dallas. I agree. And they got me. Do we need to do a cuss corner, or has this, like, entire episode been like a cuss corner? Yeah, I was going to say, I mean, we could go on a, a, a tangent if you wanted to, but we sort of already went on two big ones. Do you, what, what, you got something quick for us? It was about those salt grinders. Doesn't everybody have one? Not everyone has them. And by everybody, I don't mean everybody. I mean that. I'm being hyperbolic. I mean, a lot of people have. You mean, like, many people tell me they yes. have salt grinders. <laughs> like, They're it's terrific. Not some weird, it's not some weird 
out of the ordinary sort of elite thing. Like quite a few people have these things. That that was not to my point. Yes, I, I think the person who told you that 98% of people haven't even heard of them might have also been hyperbole at the same time. Um, I've had one. It was at the beginning of the pandemic. We started ordering our groceries online and getting them delivered. Much better that way. Um, but they didn't have salt. They only had the salt grinders because we needed a thing of, we always use kosher salt. So you can come over and enjoy some, some <laughs> meals <on>. at my house. <laughs> I but I, but I, I like to pour salt into like a cup and then be able to like either use teaspoons to like measure yeah. things if I'm cooking or just take like a little bit out and sprinkle it on something. Tim, and here's how this got down to it, is Tim has like a salt grinder. I just don't understand what the salt grinder does. Like it grinds the salt into yeah. smaller little. Yeah, you know what? My salt is already pre-grinded. Ground. Uh, I like my. I like to be able to grind it freshly on top of whatever I'm having. See salt. I have this little device where you push a button and it just does it for me. You don't even have to do the one where you actually twist it. You have like an electronic one. Now I you mean, are when so I grew up, grow, elite. Growing up, we had the you had to you had to twist it. But yeah, now I bought one that it has batteries, and then you just push the button on the top. And then it just grinds the salt on the on the meal for you. It, it's excellent. I like authentic sea salt. That's me. That's what I like. I'm sorry. It's not that expensive. It's not that hard to get. And it's good. So, yes. I, and then, so I made this point, and someone told me that it's, like, the, the most, like, elite thing. And, like, that's so strange. And I was like, no. A lot of people have these things. And I just wanted to make that point that I'm not a weirdo if I like to grind Salt or pepper or fresh herb. Well, no, no, no. That is two completely different things. Ground pepper and ground salt, completely different. Well, they come together. Like, you get the right next to each other at the store. The salt grinder and the pepper You, you realize that they right are not the same them. product, correct? No, but salt and pepper go together. Like, they not are... necessarily. Like, any chef worth his salt, <laughs> joke, uses salt and pepper on almost everything. Yes, Those but, two but spices are di the, diff the difference between you and a chef is they measure their salt. You know how Tim does it? Feels no, like no, it they don't. They feels like it needs some more videos. salt. I've seen videos. They don't measure it. They just, oh, it needs salt and pepper, and it's just grind, 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 grind. Yeah, Tim, they're professional chefs. They actually know how much is coming out in the grind. You just keep going until you have no taste buds, so you have to I have everything oversalted. No, yeah. I salt to taste. So here's the big thing with Tim, why this ended up coming up. Uh, he was apparently making chicken stew, but needed... No, he's making turkey soup, but needed chicken broth for it. Yes. But what actually happened, Tim? I bought the 30% less sodium one. No, which... no, 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 no. That is not what happened. What did you mean to buy? I think I meant to buy stock but and what? I bought broth, which apparently are different things. I didn't know. It's true. I didn't know. So he okay, was anyway, complaining so that the low sodium thing, he's like, well, it needed so much more salt. It's like, you brought the wrong product. It did. You maybe legit brought, what it bought was. something that was not proper for what you but were I, trying to cook with. Maybe that's what the problem was, but I thought it was that, I'm and it's always... true, the less sodium stuff is just not as tasty. I've had used the less sodium taco mix before, and it's like, this is really bad. Like, Yuck. Salt always goes through my hand before it gets on to my food. Just because it's got to be like, you don't want too much and you kind of want it in a direct hit. And eat like there's times where I'll take salt and I'll like sprinkle a little and then I still like. Yeah, you throw the rest away. Yeah. Because like I don't need all this. And, but and Tim's whatever. the opposite. Tim like has no taste buds. So he has to put That's so much like, salt I would never on like, everything. Then why do you need so much salt on everything? I don't need that much salt. I just like a little bit. Of, salt brings out the flavor of the food you're eating. A little bit, sure, but I've seen you put massive amounts of salt. And then you're going no. on about how you can't use table salt. What do I live in a diner? You steal fucking crackers from Wendy's. <laughs> That's a fair point. But I'm not saying you can't use table salt. I just, I, I, I don't. Yeah, because you're an elitist. No, I just, I prefer the better salt. That's all. And they're not that much more expensive. Come on. Wait, how, would, not, how, would you, saying, how would you? How would you? How would you know like what I'm the price? How would you know stuff? what the price is when you already said you don't look at the prices of anything? Well, well, I looked it up yesterday when we were chatting because I actually had no idea what it cost. You're like it's not Lucille like Bluth. Saying, uh, not like I was saying, oh, you've got to have saffron on a meal or real vanilla bean, or it doesn't count. Like obviously, that would be a very elitist thing to say. Tim, too rich, coming at you again. Doesn't even look up. It's prices. Not, no, he it's not buys, that. I, I, just buys. No. Well, I do. That's a beautiful him. life to literally go through the, the store, not even having. And it's not because he looks like it's not like he doesn't look because he doesn't know or sorry, because he's bought it so much. He just knows what it costs. He doesn't care. No, but he's also the same guy that dents cans in order to buy them to get a discount. No, I don't do that. I would never buy a can <laughs> that was dented. It's the opposite. And listen, I like to go through flyers, too. What if, too, what if it was like a ragu a, can? 
Yeah, you, oh, get, I, you can't you've, get those you've in stock right now. So you not like I'm it. flying blind. You, you've mentioned that you go through the flyers to get discounts, and then it also came out last week that you go to the like corner store every single day to buy food, which is way more expensive than you would buy at a grocery store. So what's the point I, of going I through contain, the fucking flyers? I, I contain multitudes. It sounds like you don't do anything. No, it's just I like to on Saturday mornings I will look through the flyers with my coffee. And if I see, oh, this particular grocery store has a few good things on, I'll remember to go there. But then, like, I don't know, you know, oh, beef short ribs are on. What's a good price flyers? for beef short ribs? No, I don't, I don't know. Flyers? The, do so them? he's concerned about the, in the price newspaper. of things. I get the in, Saturday newspaper. In flyers. Yet, when once he gets to the store, he doesn't care what the stuff costs. He's not even no, no, I'm going to that store because <laughs> like, I know I, That doesn't make any beef. sense. <laughs> no, no. I know, okay. Chickens are on sale, so I'll buy a go get a couple of. Why chickens it doesn't matter what it costs. You're not looking at the. No, price. no. But I'll know that they're there and that it's on sale, and so I've gone there to buy them. But I don't care. When you talk about chickens, you're talking about the pre-made chicken, correct? Not always, but usually. I like the rotisserie chickens. They're pretty good. You know, sometimes they are pretty good. They're when you're high. No, no, no. Yes, That's good if no. You're... That is a hundred percent. You're if you're too drunk and stumbling by, there's no fast food no. open, and you stumble by a twenty four hour grocery store, and there's a pre made chicken. You can go ham on that because you can eat it with your hands. Or if you're high as shit, those are the two options. No, but th- what about like ones from like higher end grocery chains, like Costco? I, <laughs> I kind of consider Costco higher end, even though I know it's not. Even though I get it, like this you have to pay that... to go there. You have to pay to go there to be a member. <laughs> And like things are pricey, even though they're cheaper because it's in bulk, but they're still, you are still dropping some money when you go to Costco. You ain't going in there and dropping 12 bucks and leaving, right? It is true. You Costco, do spend a fortune, but it's not high end. Well, it can be at a good price. Like <laughs> you can get some really nice stuff at a very affordable price because of the, I bought some coleslaw the other day from, from Costco. That was exactly the type I like. And it was delicious. What are the chances that you like high-end coleslaw? Well, it's it, it's made by a steakhouse in Montreal called Moishas. Oh, Moishas, uh, it's a particular, yeah. Yeah, it's a particular type of coleslaw. It's not that creamy stuff. It's the it's vinaigrette, and uh, it's it's delicious. Uh, and so I bought it at Costco. I was like, I don't know. I, I I don't know how much it costs for a tub, to, to be honest with you. It, I would say I don't even know what coleslaw costs in the store. So, I don't, I don't but, want... But whatever it cost, it was good. I don't like... I really don't want to go down this path, but I got to. How is, say, Costco high end, but like a, not a really nice BMW isn't? Oh, I didn't say it's not high end. It's just not luxury. To me, luxury is above and beyond. Yeah, luxury is private jet. According no, to luxury you. is just a, a particularly high end, high end. According vehicle. to you. Yes. According to me, the word luxury ought to be over and above, like. Yeah, a BMW or an Alfa Romero or something. I, I like that, the, the, your <laughs> disdain. <laughs> Tim drives around in a Toyota poor, and this is what he's doing. Yeah, I don't, I don't pretend to drive around in a luxury vehicle. I'm economical. No, it seems like you're under, I mean, you're Tim too rich. You don't look at what stuff costs. You're driving around in a $400 car. It's not $400. It's 20 anyway. years old. How much did you pay for this thing? I, that, that, that doesn't matter what I paid for. It's in really good shape. <laughs> Knock on wood. Knock on wood. And come on here next week and talk about how the brake line went or something. Did you pay more or less than Trump paid in taxes for that car? I well, Okay, I paid more than what he paid for in taxes <laughs> when I bought it. It only had like 120,000 kilometers on it. 120,000? Those cars like get 400,000 kilometers on them before they're done. They do. Tim too rich. Yeah, he spent all of his money on his millennial loft overlooking the lake. You know what? I, I just find this whole too rich thing. I mean, I, I know it's a joke. People are having fun with it. But again, I it's not accurate. I do live a pretty normal average person life. And so on the lake. Whatever. But if I'm going to the grocery store, I'm gonna buy the things I want. Like anyway. Yeah, so it doesn't matter what they cost. Why are you even looking at it? Well, it's not buyers? that it doesn't matter. Believe me, if I went through the checkout and I bought something and it was like 60 bucks, I'd say, you know what? Let's take that off. Oh, so no, you like wouldn't. No. You do not have. No, you would not. That is not yes, true. You would pay for it. No, I wouldn't. You I'd wouldn't say, want you the shame what? of sitting there being like, got to take that off. No, I guess I respect oh, Tim, me. Tim in the sense like he's more thinking like if it costs four. Forty nine or four eighty nine, like I don't give. Then a why look? Then why look through the flyers? Because that's all you're saying. Sometimes because you're saving, what, you're saving really what forty deal. cents. I'm no, not like there, 
like salmon was on somewhere the other day, and that uh, that was a really good buy, and I knew it was a good buy. How do you? Okay, how do you? What is a what is a normal price for a pound of salmon, Tim? <laughs> Damn it. <laughs> I don't know, but it looked like it was a good buy by the way how big it was on the front of the flyer, okay? Okay, I'm guilty. I don't know what it costs. I wish you hadn't asked that question. But I thought it was a good buy because they had the sign out front of the store with it on there, which is a sign to me that they know it's a good buy, and it was on the front of the flyer. And so that's a good buy to me. I don't know how good of a buy it is. Damn you. Can I tell you what goes on special at grocery stores? Stuff they've ordered too much of, and they either have a new shipment coming in if it's like sure. box products, or it's about to go bad if it's me. Sure, but if I'm buying salmon today, I'm cooking it tonight. Okay. I love salmon. I'm not, it's not sticking around my fridge. My mom is like the ultimate mark for that stuff. Like, you'll get another one, like, but you'll, you'll pay more to save like $5, but you'll pay like more. $20 more. But you save 5 my grandma does the exact same like, thing. Like, it's a mark for it every time. Somehow. Uh, they get people. They know what they're My doing. grandma has figured out, because she doesn't want to go to the grocery store because of the COVIDs, and the mask messes up her makeup, so she doesn't like that. <laughs> so she, she's just out on the grocery store. You know Nan, Tim. You know what she's yes. like. Uh, yes, so indeed. she's figured out how to get groceries delivered to her house, but she still has not figured out Amazon yet, which is like a... The next step. We're, no, we're all like... Oh, because she'll spend it. Oh, my God. She will buy every single thing on oh, Amazon. I get it. And then my grandfather will come in. Who used to, My grandfather's so <laughs> cheap. He used to have to come and take money back. When I was a kid, he'd take money off the table that my grandmother left as a tip. Oh, she, yeah. He'd wait for her to leave, and he'd be like, no. You can't, yeah. He's like, we can't my be leaving. My grandfather would be leaving. $20. But like my, my grandmother yeah. would tip 50% on everything. My grandfather's like, this, I make this money. Like, we can't be tipping this. Like, what do you My doing? grandfather would give me $20 to go to Sears to purchase something for him, or $40 or whatever. And he expected the receipt back with the exact change laid right next to the receipt on the coffee table. I like it. Yeah. See, that's a man of discipline. To the Unlike penny. you, you'd be like, do the penny. Have all the pennies, although pennies don't exist here anymore. No, but like that's how he was. That was the that was the type of man he was. So I, I understand that that way of thinking, even if I don't necessarily subscribe to it. If I give somebody twenty bucks to go get me, I don't know, like some orange juice or whatever. Well, or like they could they, little... they could they could tell you that the orange juice costs nineteen bucks. Well, you whatever little know. bit of change they have left, they can keep. I whatever they've done me a service. Tim too rich. Just have some have some money, sir. It does not matter to me. The point is not being that he was a bad tipper, because he wasn't a bad tipper. Just my grandmother yeah. was just 50% like 50% is exorbitant. It was basically like yeah. opening up the purse and dumping out whatever yes. cash that you had. Yes, that's and he, and he would be like, yep. Exorbitant. Like when he's like scraping like ten dollar bills back <laughs> off the table for a thirty dollar <laughs> meal. Like, all right. Like mom, wasn't great. Led to a lot of arguments and fights. Late games. Seattle at Arizona. Cardinals, three and a half point dogs at home, 56 and a half. There's three games this week. If you let's say you were playing DraftKings, Jeff, and you had Detroit, Atlanta, 56 and a half, Seattle, Arizona, 56 and a half, and Green Bay, Houston, 56 is like the three main games that you'd want to stack. Which one would you pick? Because I feel like this is the one. Yeah, this is probably the one. And I don't know. This is a major mistake by the NFL schedule makers to have a team off a bye play a team that played Monday. Yeah, so they would do that to the Jets usually. Uh, give me Seattle. I like Seattle as well. Again, the short week team coming off a of bye. Round of. Oh, you like Seattle as well? I, I, yeah, I do. I like Arizona a lot, but they don't impress me. Like even they're the, not because they're not impressive. Even in that route against Dallas, like they didn't look very good. No, well, they got they got bailed out by a couple of fumbles, and like they did what they had to do. Hit the big home were, run before the half. Just made the and, game and, feel and, and they'll do that against Seattle. Just how are they stopping Seattle? I don't think this is going to be a super high scoring game. To your earlier question, Detroit Atlanta is where I would go. I don't know. These two teams have played tight games, low scoring games in the past. I think I would be inclined to say this game's going to be like a seventeen ten game. Everyone's really surprised about it. That type of game. I'd be surprised. That is true. The coin is taking Arizona. Maybe we're undervaluing. Like, you know, it's a home dog, three and a half points. Yeah, I get it. No, I get the logic. It's just it's not where I'm going. I, can I ask a question? If this game happened, if both teams like played Sunday and it was just a normal rest, 
what would the spread be? Like, is this is this built into the spread? It doesn't feel like it is. That's what I mean. That Seattle's had a buy and Arizona played Monday, got a big TV win against Dallas. I don't know if like it's a rivalry per se, but it was an emotional win for them on a lot of levels, at least for the quarterback who um is from there. Like let's say Arizona had lost against Dallas. What is the spread? Like Seattle by six and a half? I was gonna say a full seven. Yeah, it just feels like you're not getting as much as you probably should with Beat the Cowboys on Monday Night Football, you get credit. So that's all that's all you have to do to get your credit, Tim, is beat the Cowboys on Monday Night Football. If only for that easy. Kansas City in Denver. <laughs> Denver's a nine point dog at home. Forty eight's the over under. I what do you, I mean I guess we'll talk about New England in a second, but I don't know what to make of either of these teams right now. Kansas City's great, and they don't have to try hard. That's the whole thing. Like, yeah. does that mean they cover a nine? Yeah, I think so. I'm going to tease them to be sure. But yeah, I think so. I mean, Denver got a great win last week. Kudos to them. But the Chiefs hate the Broncos, and I think the Chiefs. This seems like a spot that Mahomes will win by ten or twelve or fit fourteen points. Get your cover. They don't have to. They don't have to turn it on because this is not the time to do so. They just do what needs to be done. But even in doing that, that still usually means you cover a double digit spread, which is almost is. So I would say the game's going to be like 31, 21, something like that. So the chiefs are the chiefs are the way to play it. I agree with him. And as we kind of joked about last week, it feels like that game versus Baltimore was maybe like from a head coach perspective, the worst thing to ever happen to this team because they like put them like, they know how good they are when they try, and it seems like they know how good they could be when they go half-assed, and everything you guys have said, like, this is a team that, like, you you just hope you don't pick on them a week they decide to go full throttle, but I almost feel like they're just playing possum against the whole league. I'm going to take Denver a lot of points. A lot of points. Don't Can't... know if your guy, Melvin Gordon, is going to be back for this oh, one. He what, has strep a, throat. what a guy. He has strep throat. What a guy. That's contagious. <laughs> Um, like yeah, Denver here, Melvin Gordon. I'm surprised he hasn't blamed the Chargers for the DUI yet. Aren't we <laughs> responsible for everything that's gone wrong in his professional career? <laughs> I don't know what to do here. Denver was very successful against the Patriots and throwing the ball down the field. I assume that's why Drew Locke kept trying to throw the ball down the field at the end of the game for absolutely no reason. And Turning it over. Kansas City, good on the back end. It's hard to really take a lot of deep shots on them and actually complete them. Denver, a tough team to run on. Short week. Denver can't, can't score. That Denver matter. can't score. That's, that's the thing. Denver cannot score. I know. They kicked a lot of field goals in a game they should have won by Six. like 445, right? Yeah. yeah. They can't score. So how can they cover? It was 18-12 and you're like, oh my God, New England might pull I thought New England was going to come back and win. Despite looking like shit the entire <laughs> game. I'll take... I'm going to take Denver with you, Jeff. Maybe they'll kick a 58-yard field goal down 11 points at the end of the game to get it back within one score and cover the spread by the number. Your team, Jacksonville and the Chargers. We briefly talked about this before we came on air. The Chargers are now a hefty favorite at home, 7.5 points. The over-under in this game is 49.5 I think there's one of two ways that you play this game. You just bet Jacksonville plus seven and a half and assume the Chargers do what they always do and just play to the level of their competition or bet the Chargers like minus 30 because they'll absolutely tune the Jags who are not good. But the Chargers show me way too much of just playing to their competition. They play the Saints. They play great. Saints are good. They play Tampa Bay. Tampa Bay is good. They play great. They'll play some shit team and play like shit. And I don't know if Keenan and Mike Williams are going to be back either. I think they'll be back. Uh, do you know that, or do you just think No, that? I think they'll be back based on what the injuries were and, and having the bye, the defense, getting bodies yeah, Mel- back. Yeah, Melvin Ingram's back. Melvin Ingram back. Justin Jones, uh, an important nose tackle. Uh, yeah, as you said, the number, just here we are. What a role reversal now to win by more than a touchdown. Um, they should be able to do this. does seem quite annoying, but when you sort of like – you look at it on paper and you see how competitive they've played shorthanded. And then you look at this Jacksonville team 
And, and week one feels forever ago. They've lost to the Dolphins. They've lost to the Bengals. They've lost to the Lions. Like, they are losing to the really bad, bad teams. teams. I think they might be the team closer to what we thought they were going to be. Are, that being said. They get in the first pick? Well, that, that, that'll very be its own concerned. thing. That being getting said, Pat, concerned. one thing that sort of annoyed me about this spread was I feel like when we did this show last week, the Jets were eight points to the Dolphins or getting eight. And I'm like. To me, the adult, like the Jags and Chargers talent gap to me isn't as far, or at least the Jags ability to play football and like have a fun competitive football game uh, isn't uh, is a lot closer than the gap of the Jets and the Dolphins, um, which was uh, that. Look, n- Vegas has got a lot of money tied up in that plus sixteen hundred Herbert rookie of the year, <laughs> so they're trying to counter that off by picking the Chargers heavy favorites and getting people to give that money away on the other side. <laughs> I'm excited. I, I'm looking forward to watching a game. I'm looking forward to getting the win. This could be a super lock. I do sort of see it how you're seeing it. Like the Chargers might just um, onslaught it. Yeah, I'm, ta- I'm taking the Jags because I think it's more likely that the Chargers play like shit and win by three. I strongly considered them for a survivor, even though I'm not playing them. But we're going to take the Chargers and we're going to tease them down. They're the last part of the, the teaser. I think this is a trap line because everyone's taking the Chargers. Yeah, I need another game, though. Like, I might jackhammer City, Pat, like a two-team Chargers-Jags. Chargers. Take the Bills. The Bills cannot not cover. Yeah, but I don't want to. Even to tease that at a touchdown, I feel like I could get annoyed. Um, Like a Saints-Chargers two-team teaser because I want to have so much money on the Chargers to win this game. I'd stay away from the Saints. But I don't want to lay the points, and I don't want to lay minus 350. So I need to do something before the game, which puts me into the game with a lot on it. But let's get a win. But you, you kind I of, would, I want to yeah, get you, on yeah, a plane you, and fly you, you to hit this the game. ultimate thing, though. You're like on paper when you look at this, like it doesn't really match up. The Chargers, are the ultimate on paper team. Like if you ran Stratomatic for the Chargers, they'd be 16 and 0. Oh, I wish. Yeah, I wish we were Stratomatic. I would love to get on a plane to go see this kid win his first game. But that's a different world in a different time. No, well, in 2021, you'll be able to. How do you know? Are you cursing 2021 already? Hoping by September of 2021, he can go see his first game in person, his first win in person. Maybe they play the Bills next year in Buffalo. When's that? No, right I want to. I want to go to the building. I, I got to get out there. Um, you can. You can't smoke in that building, as my uncle has let me know. Very true. That's too bad. Him. Looks cool. It's a soccer stadium. Oh, no, it's the new yeah. stadium, right? They don't play in Yeah, the new anymore. one with the big yeah. columns, almost like Soldier Field, you sort of descend into. Sort of neat looking. San Francisco at New England. Yeah, it was quick. That was quick. It was. I got yeah. nothing yeah. to say. We, we, let's, talked let's about get her, it. we talked about her. I mean, it's going to be more fun when they lose this game. We come in next week and talk about the Chargers. Maybe, yeah, but if they lose and he the looks show. fine, I'm I'm okay. You're okay if they lose to the Jags? It's one thing to lose to the good teams. It's another the, thing to those lose to the prisms, bad teams. Those prisms value is going to plummet if he loses yeah, when to Min- the Jags, man. Think about your investments, Minchu man. prisms. <laughs> Do you want to know? Well, I don't want to get into it. I, oh, I yeah. The Lawrence prisms are coming, Jeff. If I tank the market, so be it. Like, it, it, it uh, I'll be an investor. I'll, you'll have to give me some tips. See, what's so comes. weird about the prisms is I don't want to get into <laughs> okay, it. Okay, good. We're, we're running yeah, behind on this show. No, you I'm say, not getting into you it. You turn into the Jeff Feinberg show. Yeah, I got my show. own show. You turn into the Jeff Feinberg show where he only talks about sports cards. <laughs> there is one sports card thing I would like to have a long-range discussion about. Well, we don't have time for that. No, not on this, which I'm thinking about doing on... That's you making your, your pre-production show? on your show on my show now. I see how this goes. <laughs> no, I just made no. If we needed time to go to a million places, I could have gone there quickly. Then let me just ask you: Hunter Henry or Hawkinson? Hawkinson. They're like Atlanta is the worst team against Titans. Yeah, I know. And he's the hawk. He goes. Ah! <laughs> okay. <laughs> San Francisco at New England. Two and a half. New England is favored at home in a Jimmy G revenge game. Is it a revenge game? Yeah, used to play for the by the logic of how fake revenge games work, it would be a revenge game. But like, didn't they do him the ultimate? It's a fucking made up thing. I'm sorry. Jesus Christ. They did him such a service. 45 is the over under here. This is, I know the Patriots look like shit last week. They really did. They look horrible. In fairness to Cam, he had COVID for two weeks before playing. This was his first week back. Maybe he was a bit rusty. I don't know. Gilmore as well. And just because San Francisco went from 
being in a terrible spot against Miami and getting shellacked to all of us taking San Francisco last week in a great spot at home on Monday night. All of a sudden, it's only two and a half. You're giving me New England. You kidding me? Yeah, yeah, the doors are opening wide open for the Patriots to win the division. That's for certain. I love the Patriots in this game. I couldn't put them on the teaser because I refused to tease through zero. That's where it gets me. But I really, really, really love New England in this spot. I like New England as well. Um, and you mentioned it. Well, what a great spot it was last Sunday night for San Francisco. Even like <laughs> you got your chalk monkey friends thinking like like how much value there is on that Ram line that's like dropping. And, and no, makes we, we no have another sense. one this week too. Um, but yeah, I'm the Patriots at home. Bounce back. Round of pats for us. Uh, maybe the Pates, Maybe the Patriots suck, and they are the no, team that they, we saw they, last week. They're, their schedule was completely thrown out of whack the last couple of weeks. And for them to only lose by a touchdown and have the ball at the end of the game, I, I was impressed. Even though, uh, I mean, yes, they didn't play well, but that's as bad as they can play, and they still only lost by six. It, there's only bright things in their future, I think. No Mostert either. Mostert's going to be out. Just They're going to Jarek. They are going to Jarek. They went to Jarek. Sunday night game, Tampa at Vegas, the third consecutive primetime game. I guess last week wasn't primetime for the Bucks, but it was the no. game of the, it was America's Marquee. game. Of I week. think they've got more coming up. They probably they play do. next Monday night. Yeah. Oh this is just the beginning. I'm well, picking the Raiders. I'm picking the Raiders too. Raiders Sup- two, two and a half. Super Bowl matchup. Super <laughs> what? Bowl rematch. Yeah, it's a 2002 oh. Super Bowl. So is this a revenge the game? The center went nuts. And then people said that the Raiders coach intentionally tanked the game by changing the game plan the night of. Uh, the Super Bowl, and uh, Rich Gannon lost that Super Bowl. Maybe, I guess, Rich Gannon won't be doing this game. Collins the last Super- will. It just, just, again, this is the exact same situation as last week. Everyone's going to lose their money on the slate throughout the course of the day. Oh, Tampa Bay by less than a field goal? Here's more money. No, 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 no. We already saw this with Oakland Water. Oakland. I even wrote down Oakland. Vegas against the Saints on Monday night. We've already seen this once this year. Oh, Vegas coming off a bye. I'll just take Vegas in the points. How real will the hype be for the Raiders if they have back-to-back wins on the Chiefs and Brady? Like that's that. Are like, people getting really excited about Vegas? I think if they beat the the if they beat the Bucks on Sunday night, and then you like sit back and you're like, "What? They beat the Chiefs and then the Bucks." That's got to be worth a lot, at least in people's minds. You could, like, I don't know. That can, That's a flip. And I'll say, I was thinking about things. I was a l- wrong on a lot of things as it pre- pertains to the season. I mean, we do a season preview show, put ourselves out there, make picks. Lots of mine are going to go bad. I fully expected we were like, a, if not, like it'd be Mariota season by now. I thought so too. But he's on injured reserve. He somehow hurt himself in I practice. I didn't even know that. I didn't even know that. I think Nate the Great is their backup at the moment. I think. Maybe Mariota's back. Tim's favorite player. Didn't the Raiders win a short-priced home Sunday, like, primetime game already? That yeah, they beat the Saints. New Orleans. They beat the yeah. Saints. New Orleans. Like, they outright beat the Saints. Yeah. I like, yeah, I like it, Vegas. And who do they? Who does Tampa play next Monday night, Tim? Tampa plays at the Giants next Monday night. <sighs> That's a win. Yeah. So, yeah, who are you taking here? Tampa by DVOA is not just the best team of football. It's the best team by a ton in football. Like they are significantly. What, what happened to the Colts who were the best team by DVOA last They're fourth. week? They're fourth, but they were way up on everyone else. No, two weeks ago, they were number one. Now they're number four. Tampa is the huge favorite over Baltimore, Pittsburgh, Indy, and Seattle. Uh, but we I all know the Kansas, Tampa. but we all know the Kansas city is the best team in the league. So what's that telling us? I, well, I'm just saying by the numbers, if you think the DVA is somewhat valuable, I think it's got some value. But you, but you don't, unless it agrees with you. I do, and they have Vegas at 21. So I think there's, I'm, I'm taking the Buccaneers. I think the Bucs should win this game. I think Tim is right. On paper, logically, there's really no case you can make for Vegas to win this game. It's just I've seen this happen too yeah, many the times. The spot, the spread, the game. Let's go. If this game is on Sunday afternoon, it's like Bucks minus five and a half or something. It feels that way, doesn't it? <laughs> I swear. What are they going to make this by the time like the course of the day goes? Like, what does this final number end at? Oh, when people Four? just need to bet the game and it's eighty eight percent Tampa money. Yeah, yeah, four is probably a fair number. I would still take Tampa at that point. Yeah, I could see not that not changing your um, an opinion. I don't know. Hopefully, the Raiders got healthy because they were really. They're banged up on defense. They were really banged up after that Bills game, 
and I thought you thought the Chiefs were gonna just, you know, beat them half trying and ended up being quite quite the game. If Derek Carr can hold on to the ball, which he's been doing really well so far. He's been, yeah. He's been really efficient. And if he can continue to be efficient, like even in the games that Tampa's won, like it's it's funny to me that they're number one in DVOA by so much. I think it's because they're good in all three facets. Correct. Um, Like even their special teams, I would imagine, is ranked inside the top 10. Actually, it's 17. Okay. So number seven offense, number one defense, 17 in special teams. But a lot of the games that they've won, and maybe, I mean, that's part and parcel with this that they've been winning games because their defense has been generating turnovers they don't win that charger game if they don't get the fumble on the three yard line right before the end of the half they don't beat aaron Rodgers. he doesn't throw a pick six for the the third time in the past what 12 years well, they, or whatever they it is. did win 38 to 10 I yeah mean. but that's a complete turning point in that game and i agree games, i agree honestly but we can't i agree with them. you but it's the way the packers turtled so hard i can't not give tampa that game clean as much as I, I made my rant I, on Rodgers. And, and look, their defense is causing these turnovers, and that's inflating them up the board here. But at the same time, if Vegas just doesn't make the like stupid first-half mistake, which we've seen teams do against Tampa, then why can't this we This could be my year. T- I had T- Tampa and Kansas City in the Super Bowl. That pick is looking your, good. Your victory lapping um, no, week I'm seven not, before week seven starts. I've won a couple of teasers already. I'm perfect in suicide. My Super Bowl picks are sold looking good. Sold your soul for the Jets uh, to come up a couple good things. You sold your soul, eh? I didn't do any such thing. Uh, that The Jets part has been unfortunate, but all things considered, I think you're moving in the right direction. How's he doing in your home league? Oh, he lost to me by... 70 oh. points last week. <laughs> yeah. I, I'm, I'm, a, I'm actively tanking and somehow I'm in like the playoffs right now. Yeah. Well, I made it. I made a trade. I mean, we, we play in two home leagues together and one I'm killing the redraft league. Yeah. The one and that then the keeper. Yeah. The, the one that no one pays for. Yeah. You're, you're dominating. People pay for it. No, they People didn't. pay for it. Not yes, a single. They do. I, you may have been the only person who actually paid. Have you actually paid for the league? Well, apparently it's supposed to be 50 bucks to play. Yeah. Has anyone so, paid? So when I win, I'll collect. <laughs> but yeah, you're no, not the other you're league. not getting any of that money. That's why no one takes that league seriously. The other league is terrible because I had the second overall pick and I took Barkley and then I took Cohen. The so money I, that I've we had, pay money to play in. I've had a lot of problems with that team. So yeah, losing to me, not great. Oh well, I guess it's good for me. I'm not going anywhere. Listen, I see this Tampa Bay Buccaneers defense lighted up, and and it makes me think that. Uh, I can't wait for their game against the Saints in a couple of weeks. That game excites me to no end. The Bucks can win that, then they have a real crack at the number one seed in the in the AFC NFC. Sorry, are we just pretending like Seattle doesn't exist? Who's undefeated? Yeah, Seattle's still got to go. Got to go through San Francisco twice, the Rams so twice. Let's do the math. The Jets have uh, first I, overall, and then they have Seattle's thirty what, second. Thirty second overall. Well, someone, someone made. And then mention, they have the, the Jets thirty third overall. It'll be the first well, back time to back. It'll be the first time ever the Jets have had the thirty second pick. It's very exciting for them. And then the well, Darnold they, trade will get them what, like thirty nine overall. Okay. Oh, by there that point, they, they're, they're not going to be able to get a second for him at the end of the year. Are you kidding me? After the team I don't goes know why 16? you need to be so. I don't know why you need to be so mean, Jeff. I've been nothing but supportive of you. Like you're I, I'm actually it. talking fine. about the Take positive. I'm talking about the no, positive. No, you're not. Look at the smile on your face. You know what you're doing, <laughs> and that's fine. You have your fun. I really hope Herbert plays well this week. Really yeah, you, should, you should actually guarantee he plays well. You know, I uh, was trying to tank. I'll, your, I'll your say prisms. this: I think him rookie of the year, free money. I'll, I'll say that right oh, now. Oh no, that's, you brought oh, this on yourself. Wow, <laughs> that's like the universe knows what he's doing. So no, know, you're just hoping that the universe no, doesn't they, know they what know. he's up to. They know. They know. Blown oh, out no ACL. A curse. I can't wait. He's gonna get. So you're not like nervous a bus all the way into the stadium. Honestly, let it do its worst. I'm not afraid. I might. <laughs> I um, I finally had my cards shipped to me because I had to send them because they charge us like How much we're did in it cost Siberia. You? No, I just had someone take care of it. Thank you very much. And very I'm going to sell some silver prisms this week. Oh. I got too many of them. Because now, now that he's Andrew cursed? Yeah. yeah. Smart. Every single week we now have, uh, we have card corner. I'm going to, that's going to be the thing. I actually, I'm not going to get to go home for Christmas this year. That's a bummer. My family's bummed out. That sucks. I bet. Eh. It's awful. Yeah, it's fine. <laughs> yeah, but you do. Uh, you well. I, I can handle 
being being away from Christmas. But I feel like you do a good setup. You like you don't like stay with anyone. You Airbnb and no, no, because I can't go because like there's still like Tim. It's where Tim lives. But if I were to come home as it stands right now, Tim, I would have to self isolate for two weeks, right? Oh, because you're from the big city. From the epicenter. I'm from, from the, the epicenter. Well, <laughs> compared to them, where they have zero cases, yeah. and here it's like 1,200 a day. 800, but yeah. Um, yeah, yeah, so I don't go home Funny. for two full oh, okay. weeks. Okay, sorry. I, so, I didn't realize that there's in country quarantine from people from yeah. the, like the Ford us Atlantic from, provinces. From you big cannot city. travel to the Ford Atlantic provinces without self isolating. For 14 days. If you're from the big smoke. Yeah. No, if you're from anywhere else outside the bubble. Anywhere that's not those four provinces. Wow. Well, I have a friend who's uh, going up to Happy Valley Goose Bay. That's where my mom is, was actually oh, born. Nice. And he doesn't have to. He's doing. He's going for business. Okay. But well, he should some, be out there, there right some, now. There and, are some exceptions for, for business and yeah, stuff maybe. like that. But they're very, very few and far between. Because he doesn't have to isolate. He's going there for like two days. But he's not really allowed to leave anything except for his hotel. Anyway, oh, I'm I sure the rules are incredibly strict, yes. But we've been very fortunate here. Our bubble, our province has had like three cases in the last month or something, or five cases in the last... We've been very fortunate. It didn't stop my mom from going to get tested, though. Oh, people are still should be getting tested. If there's any chance of a symptom, you, one should get tested. She didn't interact yep. with anyone, started like feel like she like, had a headache and went to get a COVID test. Well, or, we, uh, we uh, have I was capacity like, for a I was like, and we're not... Well, fair enough. I was like, Mom, there's been no COVID cases like the past three weeks in your province, and you haven't encountered anyone. It seems like a waste of time and a waste of resources. Well, I get it, but better safe than sorry, I suppose. I don't know about that. Send some of those. You got so many extra tests? Send them up here. We need them. Yeah, we need them. <laughs> Monday Nighter, Chicago at the Rams. I love this game. I love the Rams. What's their record now? Now uh, Four and seven two? or something? Four and two, I believe. Mm-hmm. Um, five and a half. The Rams are favored home. 45 and a half. Can you make the Bears more than like a three-point dog in any game? Like they're just going to muck it up with you, aren't they? Like everyone hates the Bears. Everyone. They think they're complete. They're kind of like, I think, was it you said or Tim said it? They're NFC Tennessee. Tennessee's no. better, but they do I, the I same thing. And they are. They are. Except they have a really good defense. I like Chicago. I'm taking the Bears because uh, McVay is a Foss Sharp. Phony Sharp guy. Uh, Bears and the points. There's another guy that you just project on. You think he's a certain way, despite the fact that you saw a clip of him that got circulated online. And the only thing you're holding against him is that he has a really good memory. <laughs> Doesn't have a... G- According to you, it's a production. He's just doing it for the cameras. I Listen, whatever. Go find your next Sean McVay's. <laughs> honestly, we'll look back at it as one of the most embarrassing off-seasons in NFL history. Kingsbury's doing okay. You're right. He is. I'll give him that. But this whole, like, go find, go find Sean McVay. I watched that whole Bears Colts game almost entirely. And I can tell you, and I watched a lot of the Panthers game and Bears game. And both those games, Chicago was very unimpressive. Swift dropped in a game winning touchdown for like the, 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 the Falcons had to gag a game away in crazy fashion. Like the Bears are also living a charmed life. The Rams are a really good team. The are Rams, the Rams? But here's the thing. Are the I Rams, think they are. I get that you I think, think he, they are, he, but you've gone into the year thinking that they were great. What have they really and I think done? I've been proven right. What have they done to make you think that they're great? See, I don't think they're good, and I don't think I've been proven wrong. Like, I'm not sweating my win total under yet. I guess Pat's the neutral one here because I, I have a just. I, I don't I like them. The under on them too. Them. Like, I think they're they're fine. Like, okay. top five offense. Are they? They beat the top. cow. They beat the Cowboys by three. Week one, the Cowboys are fucking horrendous. They beat the Eagles. They have three wins against the NFC East. Like the worst they have division. Four wins against the NFC East. Four they wins. do. So that, that all of their wins, they have yet to win a game that isn't against the NFC okay, East. Thank you, Chicago. Five points. What okay, am I getting? But like, five and a half. Look at the Bears. The Bears are also. I'm not, I, that I'm not saying the Bears are good, but five and a half points seems like a lot. Bears beat Tampa. Tampa. Okay. And the Bears they, had, they did. The Bears have an even better record too. All right, then go to the window and take the Bears. I tell you, that's what we're doing. That's what we're saying. But your claim that you haven't been proven wrong that the Rams are good when they've played literally the four worst teams. Four worst. I'm shocked they haven't played the Jets, too. 
here's no, the if thing. Only. They, I, they will, though. They will. Uh, can it I, comes up because they play what? the East. I want to say something, but I just got to confirm it. And you don't know with these schedules now, because with the new schedules, some places haven't altered the schedules. Okay. So the Rams next week play the Dolphins that's, at the Dolphins and then against the Seahawks, Bucks, and 49ers. That's that's when we're going to find out. The After their week nine bye, they get the Seahawks coming out of their bye, Bucks, 49ers. We'll find out if they're a real team. I'll tell you, I am excited. I am excited to see Tua reverses some of those high-end players on the Rams. I think that's a fun... It could be bad news for him. Well, that... You, Miami still can't block. Miami initially, their bye week out of the bye week on their original schedule was Jets, supposed Jets. to be the Jets. It was Jets by Jets. So when I saw the Tua news, I'm like, what a great, like, even like, he'll come out, he'll play the Jets, like, it'll be perfect. And then you see it's like the Rams, like, oh, I still love the move. But like, you're right. It's a little scary. Like Aaron Donald in your first game. I do remember Tim. Are Ram fans willing to call a casket match? Oh. Um, Tim complaining during the schedule release show. That it was such an advantage for Miami to play the Jets, then buy, then the Jets, because they're the worst team, and that favors the worst team. <laughs> remember that, too? Yeah. The exact opposite happened to be the case. <laughs> yes, I do remember. It Thank would, you for mentioning it. it would still, what, a, what a sweet thing. If the schedule hadn't been rearranged, it would still favor the Dolphins, though, I think. I think it would, because they'd have... Be Your preseason Jets opinions might be some of the craziest football takes on the show. Look like it. Start starting to look like it. Bomb squad, mean, Jeff. Best. Well, there's been a ton of injuries that there's I didn't so anticipate. Many, oh, it's, so it's all no, you. It's, it's all injury related. So many no, layers. Right? Give injury. him a pass. You having the chutzpah to come in here and tell us NFL fans who follow the league who the story of the league is. Well, in some ways, I wasn't wrong, but I was wrong for the right <laughs> right for the wrong reasons. <laughs> yeah, but Dallas is the team that everyone like the shitty team that people are talking about. Not even the Jets. People just feel like people laugh at the Jets. They should. Their head coach well, is like letting the thing. defensive coordinator openly uh, bash him in the press. Like, why doesn't he just fire him? Why does he stand for that? Anyway. No, I think whole- Tim is right uh, in his sense that, like, if you're the Jet, like, I want G- Gase to suffer this torture. You don't oh, let yeah. him he off the hook. Pay- you don't get a get a paycheck for nope. free. Um, you, you either quit. quit you, wanna- you either quit and go into solution in, in Peyton Manning's Lake Tahoe ski house or you <laughs> suffer through this sucker. And that's exactly. one more other thing from my notes. Great little John Elway made mistakes on the job. Peyton Manning got to make his first big pro mistake just as a consultant. Exactly. Exactly right. So he gets that out of the way before one day, like I fully expect him to be like president of the Colts or something. So the mistake is getting Gase hired. He His sign That's sealed word mistake. of approval got Gase the job. So what, what does exactly. he tell people? He's like, you know who Adam Gase was good with? Peyton Manning. I'm no, like, Manning like, vouches for him. No, that, 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 what the fuck does that mean? Peyton Manning is not a pro scout. He is someone no, who knows his rest- abilities. It was a rest- his listen, the Johnson family weight. like are wh- stupid. I guess they're like, they oh. can't even come up with a vaccine. <laughs> They, they hurry up, Johnson. I guess Johnson. in their like process, they're like, "Oh, let's get Peyton Manning's opinion," and this was his five star recommendation. Now he probably hates the Jets. I, I might have to bring Tim on my show to do a really deep dive on how did the Jets actually win seven games last year? They Sam, had the, they had Sam played great down the league. stretch. Is that what it Sam. was? Yeah. Go look. But go also, look Sam played, played out of his mind. Oh, yeah, so Sam Darnold played just played so great. great. Yeah, he's fucking incredible. Sam yeah. played great. He went six and two to finish the year. He played really well coming off his injury. Another year where he's hurt, things are wasted, people are hurt. It's uh, but uh, at some point the buck has to stop, and we're at that point now. Sucks. So let's go through our super locks of the week. Jeff, you are riding a heater five and one. I'm not ready. You're not ready, Tim. You're riding a heater two and four. <laughs> I'll take the Texans plus three and a half. Wow. Houston plus three point five. I have it narrowed down to Cleveland. I actually like Green Bay on the other side of that game. I said I would stay away from Pittsburgh because Tennessee just terrifies me. I like Washington <laughs> against Dallas. You love Chicago. I do like Chicago, and I like Vegas. I just think that's a good spot. Like, there's a couple of games I would need to narrow this down to like three when I actually go to the window and bet this week because I like Seattle as well. I'm going to take. New England minus two and a half. I like it. 
I haven't done it this year. Oh boy, here we go. Ah, uh, here we go. Jacksonville <laughs> plus I seven and a half. Five and one. You're willing to give up a loss here? My course. <laughs> Smoke show Sunday. Sm- both sides of the football. Yeah. Chargers minus seven and a half. Minus seven and a half. The last air time- show, gun show, jack boy show, defensive show. This Jags team is what we think they are. I am telling you. I feel like the last time that you you did something like this, they no. lost by like forty points to Miami. No, I think they won that game. There was one game where they got absolutely shellacked. That was many years ago. Yeah, it was back at the old studio. Yeah, I know the game. It was a really bad game. It was like a powder blue Chiefs game in the Alex Smith days before Mahomes. Uh, oh, yeah, this is the game. This spread isn't high. This spread, I think, is wrong. You hope it's wrong. You hope the Chargers are better than this. Yeah, I think the Jags cover this game. Like I said. Yeah, we have this history of like playing, like we, we played up to Brady and Breeze and Mahomes, and we're going to like lollygag Minshew. That, yeah. That's our when, MO. When you play some Minshew walk, you get chicken balls from Minshew walk, which are 99% batter. You have to go to the Flyers at the grocery no, no, store. We to are get some doing, good chicken balls. We're going to win the turnover battle. We are going to, we are going to, I'm a little worried about the back door. Tim, you also put a ton of soya sauce on everything. That's Ew. not even just rice, right? On some things. I do love what? soya sauce. I yeah, it's salt again. Guy can't Chicken. get enough salt. He's putting soya sauce on everything. I'm telling Chicken, you, man. Smoking fries, is ruined your taste rings. Soy French sauce? fries? Oh, yeah. You put soy sauce on French fries. What? Also, apparently, I've been told this, an inside source, on the weekend, <laughs> he was putting mustard on his onion rings. Who's telling stories? Yes, that's true. We were at a golf course, and I don't like ketchup. It's disgusting. And so I got onion rings, and uh, yeah, I had some yellow mustard for dipping. Can't you just eat the onion rings? Well, I like the mustard. It's, it's if actually you were it's a, at it's home, a compliment. Would, if you were at home, would you have just dumped soy sauce on them? Soy sauce and, and HP sauce, yeah, probably. What if you don't have onion rings very often? You don't, you, I don't have onion rings very often. Tim is taking Buffalo in Survivor. Yeah. And your free money, tell me if I have this right. Detroit plus nine and a half. Buffalo minus seven. Houston plus nine and a half. Kansas City minus three. Jacks or the LA Chargers minus one and a half. Those five teams? Those are the teams. Important question. And you, how, how is this not a seven game teaser? You Seven points. You can get the, the Detroits to 10. You can get Houston to 10. You can get. Because he doesn't want them. Want, want the little extra value. You can get well, you're not talking about value. You just want extra money. Value, Correct. I want value, the money. And, value and greed aren't the same things. Value right? and yeah, teasers I, I, don't I exist. I want the extra money. I want the extra money. Okay, but there's like key numbers that you could sit on. And all you take the bills off the full touchdown to six and a half. Yeah, you get it's to already t- free money. It's already free money. It's Doesn't already matter. free money, Jeff. Jeff, you're looking for logic where it does not exist. Zozo Championship. I'm going to be doing the full show, like I mentioned, with Rick Gaiman on Wednesday morning. I will be going through the entire DraftKings field and talking about the bets for the week. Uh, I bet uh, my one and done, because we're still doing that. I've, I've jumped up to a nice lead here in the one and done over the past two weeks with my guys, Asterisk. With my guys finishing inside the top 10. Um, Berger is my pick for the week. Daniel Berger, I've also bet him, thanks to you, at 39 to 1. I was going to bet it at 35, but then you told me about this 39, so I bet it at 39. I've also bet Kevin Na at 150 to 1. How's his wedge play? Isn't this a good wedge course? Did you hear that from me when I told you? No, isn't this course known as a wedge? Look at the guys who won. Yeah, it is. He's an excellent wedge player. He's one of the best in the field. I don't mind that. I'm taking Tiger Woods. He's won here before. He has five times. Yeah, and I, I've, I've said before, even though I don't, I'm not loyal to it, course history is king. He is the him. Booker T of Shearwood Country Club. Five time <laughs> champion. Five time runner up. Jeff, you picked Webb Simpson. I, I picked that. Webb Simpson. Are you changing it you, to Kevin no, Na? I don't really love the Webb pick. I thought about betting Webb. Um, my bets, I've made three bets. Reed, Morikawa, and Berger. All right, I think that's those were the other two that I was considering as I've been betting. I wouldn't want to keep betting my. I bet Morikawa every week basically this summer, and he's won twice, which has been fantastic. And there are, but pe- I've been betting him like lately too. 
And there are people saying that there is a nine people that of the nine official winners at Sherwood, four of them have won at Memorial in their Your, career. Your village is a comp course for this? Well, it's a Nicholas, Nicholas design, and apparently you got to have the ball in the right spots. I'm not really calling it a comp. Here's a, here's another well, guy. Who are the other guys who have won there then? Well, even senior tour stuff, maybe. Oh, well, that's, come on now. <laughs> I'm just saying of the nine <laughs> official winners at, of Sherwood that have played so, like, events So there. that's Tiger five times. Does he count for all five? No. So like Zach Johnson hasn't won. Graham McDowell hasn't won. Jim Furyk hasn't won. Those are three of the four of the past five winners when it was here from 2009 to 2013. Like, who were the guys before that? I saw Davis Love one. Has he ever won a Muirfield Village? I would look more like, just based on those guys, those guys dominate Colonial, and those guys dominate Heritage. That's where I would and be Mr. Burger won at Colonial. And he came top five the next week at Heritage. Yeah. That's where I'd be looking for. It won't be at Augusta, though. I right? don't mind. I've bet Cantley the last two weeks. He'll really annoy me if he wins. I can see that. But he, I think he, he's, he, he's a good California golfer. Well, you know he, who I'd, he works for the Memorial Comp. If he doesn't show strong this week, I'll start to have a few concerns. You know who, by all the things we've just talked about, should win this event? The two main things that you hit on. If you are going with the Mirfield Village type of narrative, and it's in California, that points to one John person. Rom? John Rom. Well, yes, that's also him Village. and him and Morikawa fit into. Yeah, that. But Morikawa played like Mirfield Village yeah. light. Rom, yeah, exactly. The, the first week when it was a nothing course, yeah. Anyway, that will do it. Pat Mayo experience. Anything else to add? Um, no. Everyone seems to want. <laughs> everyone seems to be attaching us to like the card mentions though. i like it <laughs> it's, it's pretty it's, funny we've created this whole it's, like it's sub- because <laughs> niche that we can't get away from <laughs> yeah. despite the fact that tim and i think it's stupid and you just buying one person's cards yeah yeah <laughs> but then he bought another card remember after it was no more cards then oh, he yeah. bought that card no a night. herbert a herbert card because how many I'm other like, cards don't we know about that's true you're just a liar no. You're like, you're hiding your sex addiction. Are we buying the oh, well, you know what? You can't cut this out. You cannot cut this out. My wife. My wife. Um, like, was getting mad at me for, like, lying about, like, 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 like just, like, really small inconse- inconsequential things. Why but, are you lying? Like, just trying to protect her in a way. So I was like, what am I lying about? What am I lying about? Like, what are you lying anything. about? I'll tell you the truth. Shouting match at Harvey's? No, I'm not lying about anything, really. Like, just, uh, what, Whatever. And they, she really, uh, what I feel, set me up. And don't, don't, you're not allowed to clip this. This is just a nugget at the end of the show. <laughs> no, I mean this. You clip it, then we have a personal problem. Because she can see the clip. She doesn't watch the show. Especially this deep in. We're like two hours and 15 minutes. <laughs> and then so it's just like, okay, like you can ask me anything. I'll tell you whatever you want. And then she's like, so how much have you spent on those Herbert rookies? <laughs> And this was framed in a conversation like she had known things that I lied to her about. So at this point, I'm like, well, she I think she knows the actual truth. Like, I think my computer was open and it wasn't like porn she saw, but it was like my eBay purchase history. So (laughs) so I'm thinking, (laughs) so I'm like, I don't know if I should like lie, like lying here, like when she's already getting mad at me for lying, like maybe I should just say and then I like just said it because I thought she knew, but she didn't know. I was like, oh. <laughs> was it a lot higher than she thought? I might have to sell some silver prisms this week at like uh, <laughs> <laughs> the prices that I paid for them. <laughs> There's like a little nugget on the way out the door. All right, I'll do it. On the Pat Mayo Experience, you can follow Jeff, card trading extraordinaire on Twitter, at GFeinberg17. Tune in next week for my full psychology profile in the mind of a killer <laughs> with Pat Mayo about Jeff Feinberg and Tim Undergust. Tim Undergust. That's not my name. I doubt you'll be able to get into my head. Is it because there's nothing in there? Are you just like Homer when he was thinking, and it's just that cow playing the violin with the turtle going, and that turtle playing his own shell? Yes. 
<laughs> anyway, check out the cheat sheet up on FTNBets.com, my Facebook page, Facebook.com slash the PME. Like the episode on the way out. Tell your friends. Oh, this episode was kind of wonky. Probably not a good first one. This, one. this one's for the people who watch. Put it that way. Thanks, Paul, for uh, behind the camera. And I'll do it. I'm Pat Mayo. I'll see you next time. <laughs> what are you having for dinner, TC? I, we gotta go move I, our cars, Paul. <laughs> I didn't bring yeah, my I'm not car. Sure. I'm good. Oh. Not sure yet. Will it have salt on it? Definitely. Will it just be a bowl of salt? That would be quite uh, quite the take. No, I might just have a bowl of cereal. Actually, now I think about it, just a bowl of cereal. Nah, I might for a growing young man like you. Yeah. Okay. Put the milk in first, like, quote, my people in that video. Did you see the video? Yeah, I did see that. It was very, pretty funny. Those are your people? All right, guys. All right. Sounds like talk to you all later. See ya. Later, Tim. See ya. See ya. Bye, Jeff. Bye, Tim. See ya, guys. Leave meeting. Did we not get a leave meeting there? Oh, we got no, one. We got one. No, we got I didn't one. hear it. He must have disconnected from me. Experience!